Again, a gorgeous full afternoon in Corvallis. A great view of the McDonald Forest, Mary's Peak, and the Coast Range of Mountains. And the weather will cooperate. You can see the temperature at 65 degrees, just a slight breeze from the northeast at three miles an hour, and very little chance of rain this afternoon. There is Jim Lambright. He was a pupil to great coaching legends, Jim Owens and Don James. This is his fifth year as the Huskies head coach and he has done a marvelous job has them to a record of five and one this year. We told you the only loss to Nebraska 27 14. The kick returners Jerome Payton is a dangerous guy at number 24 and there is number four Jawan Hooker Larry Burnett was talking about. Now Oregon State won the toss of the coin. They deferred to the second half. They want their very aggressive and fired up defense on the field first. And there is Mike Riley. The last winning season for Oregon State was 1970 at six and five when D. Andros was coach and Mike's dad Bud was the defensive coordinator. And he has enjoyed his return to Corvallis. Cortez with the kickoff and he hammers this one. No return for the Huskies. They will take the football from their own 20 yard line where their quarterback will be the very tall Brock Heward. And Heward goes 6'5, 220 pounds. He is the redshirt sophomore from Puyallup, Washington. And there is Brock, number seven. Great quarterback who has completed 57% of his passes this year. And as David told you, 14 touchdowns, only one interception this season. They huddle on the sideline and then they come straight to the line of scrimmage. No backs. They split out Rashawn Sheehy. And Heward is going to the sideline right away. And Payton with a short gain of just two yards, where he is hit by Bashir Ilahi. Now for the Washington Huskies they have a powerful offensive line and great talent in the backfield Jerome Payton just caught the pass that was his 33rd reception this year he's averaging almost 22 yards per catch and the offensive line well Olin Krutz is the All American he is the junior from Honolulu Benji Olson right next to him might be the best center guard combination in all of college football there is Krutz wearing number 77. Heward back to the air with time, dumping it off Sheehy. And Rashawn is cut down shy of the first down by about three yards. Defensively for Oregon State, solid but very small front line. Anoki Brechterfield is amazing. Six sacks this year, 36 and a half tackles behind the line of scrimmage in his career. Nathan McAtee is the run stuffer, 34 tackles this year. And in the secondary, it's a good one. Bashir Ilahi runs a 4 4 40 and you'll see him on Payton a lot today. There is Bashir from Oak Ridge Texas. Two interceptions this year. One he ran back for a touchdown. Third down three yards to go. And they run the ball to Sheehy. He's got it up to the 32 yard line a gain of five. And David, do you think Washington will really test Oregon State with a great runner like Sheehy who is leading the Pac-10 in running? Well, Rashawn Sheehy is a type of guy that can stretch to the outside. And Steve, Oregon State has to stop the run first. It's not a pleasant task, but you have to make Brock Heward, the quarterback, beat you. If you allow the Washington running game to get revved up, the game can be over very early. Washington leads the Pac-10 in rushing 188 yards per game. Fred Coleman goes in motion. Heward hands off Sheehy, big hole, and he is out to the 35-yard line where he slugged down after a gain of four. And that is what they want to do with Rashawn. He's the senior for Bakersfield, California, with a chance every single time. If he's one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, it's goodbye. That was a great play by Illahi, the defensive back for Oregon State. He had Sheehy in the open field. Nice job of tackling. As you said, Steve, Sheehy is a big load to handle out in the open field. Again, that double tight end look with Cameron Cleveland and Jeremy Brigham. Now they send Sheehy in motion, and the catch is made by Washington. 
And Payton fumbles it out of bounds. That was Jerome's 34th catch this year. Most of them have been long balls, but the first two catches he's been he's made in this game have been well five, six yarders. Well, Payton was first team all pack 10 a year ago. He's having a first team all pack 10 type of season once again. 32 catches. He's caught nine balls over 35 yards. He is definitely the big play threat for Washington on the outside. And he is a very interesting story. Number 24, Jerome Payton from Vancouver, British Columbia, actually went to college in Canada at Arcadia University and then walked on here at Washington. He has a scholarship now. On that last play, Payton fumbled before he got to the first down markers. The ball went out of bounds. Not a first down, though. They give Washington the ball where the fumble occurred. Five Beavers on the front line. They give it to Sheehy and Rashad has the first down and finally punched out inside Oregon State territory at the 47 yard line. Now this is not a subtle running game you're going to see from Washington. They like to line up in two tight end sets and they say hey we're going to come right at you if you can't stop us. There's really no need to put the ball in the air. You see the great lateral ability by Sheehy. His great gift is speed and quickness and you cannot allow this kid to turn the corner on him. Terrence Carroll making the touchdown saving tackle. Now it's first and ten at the OSU 46. Again no backs. Hewitt at quick out pass each time it's been to the left side to Bashir Illahi who's had to cover on the play and it is a short game. Washington offensive coordinator Scott Linehan showing a nice mix of formation he to open up this game. He's gone with three wide outs, splitting a fourth wide out in the form of Rashawn Sheehy to the outside. And then he's gone with the two tight ends set. Very tough to get a line on this offense as you take a look at Brock Heward's numbers last year against the Beavers. 221 yards and four touchdowns. He is four for four to start this game for 17. This is Sheehy, not much there, and he slips and falls, well shy of a first down, so he'll need about two more for a first and ten. Now they're two for two on third down conversions on this drive, but they have not been great this year converting third downs, just 32 percent. But look at that offensive line compared to the defensive line, so you know Oregon State can't take on each individual Husky. Yeah, the Beavers are really undersized, and Mike Riley, the head coach, has made the comment that we might have the smallest front four in Division One football. Here's their biggest down lineman James Riley at 270 pounds. He goes 6 5. And Hewitt calls timeout on third and two. He uses his first timeout. But David we were talking about their inability to convert third downs this year. They were very poor against Nebraska in that area and Hewitt wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page on third and two. Just a little college football atmosphere in the Pacific Northwest. And there is Mike Riley in a proved defense this year. Last year they allowed 35 points per game all the way down to 18 this year. That is third best in the Pac-10 conference. And Washington, one of the struggles, they're really good, giving up 15.8. Right now, third and two. Sheehy gets the call. He will not get the first down. He bowled his way to the 37, but then he was dropped by James Gariley, their biggest down lineman at 6'5", 270. The Oregon State defense is the unit that has kept the Beavers competitive throughout the 97 season, and they're going to have to use numbers. They're going to have to put eight defensive men up near the football to cancel the University of Washington running game. That really leaves things open on the outside of the passing game, but as I said to open up the broadcast, Steve, you got to make Brock Heward beat you, not Rashawn Sheehy. Fourth down and one. No wide receiver Sheehy. He is stuck. He is straightened up, pushed back, and I believe the Beavers have held. It was Griley and Noki Brechterfield again from that right side. Well, this is just matchup football. You run right behind Kruitz and Olsen, your two All-American offensive linemen, and Oregon State is up to the task. Riley 
A nice inside move, and for the second play in a row, Brechterfield gets great penetration. The Beavers take over. Yeah, what was it that Bob Toledo, the UCLA coach, said about Anoki Brechterfield? He said Brechterfield plays like his hair is on fire. He and is a wild man out there. First and ten for the Beavers, and flashing through is running back Ricky Walker for a short gain out past the 41-yard line. There is their offensive game breaker, Tim Alexander. He's a junior from Sarasota, Florida. He was one of the top option quarterbacks in the nation coming out of high school at Riverview High. 1,100 yards passing. Last year only threw for 328, but they ran the wishbone offense. His problem, one touchdown, six interceptions. We showed you the comparison of Brock Heward, 14 touchdowns for Brock, only one interception. Alexander pitches Walker fumbles and a loss on the play. Now Oregon State offensively they are led by Ricky Walker only 220 yards rushing only nine last week against UCLA where he had ankle problems. The offensive line is very very young only one returning starter. Trey Hyde is in his first year starting, but he is their biggest lineman at 320 pounds, a senior from Houston, Texas. Now third and ten. Blitz is on. They throw it to Walker. He got a left hand on it, but could not pull it down to his belly. It will be third and ten. Fourth down and ten, excuse me. So a punting situation. And that means Jose Cortez will come on to boot it away. And all Tim Alexander had to do on that last play for Mike Riley is just drop the ball out, give Ricky Walker a nice ball there. Walker had all sorts of running room to the outside. Well designed play by Riley. And they would go with Mike Fessler. Fessler, ninth in the Pac 10 punting, 38.9. This one. Chance will return by Payton. Now he lets it go and he'll take it and fumble, and Oregon State has it. That is one of the rare mistakes Washington has made this year. Jim Lambright, so proud of his football team, only five turnovers coming into this game all season long. And watch Payton. He says, get away from the ball. And then he wants to make a play on the ball as he sees it takes a hop inside the 20 yard line. At that point, you make, here's a signal, get away from the ball. He's alerting the punt return team to stay away. And then he makes the mistake of trying to make the play on his own. Greg Brown Davis recovered two fumbles last week against UCLA. He recovers one in the first quarter here against Washington. Alexander goes to Walker. Walker big hole and then it is closed up quickly by Lester Towns the inside linebacker. Oregon State has been very very good protecting the football and also forcing turnovers. They are plus nine now in turnover margin this year second to UCLA the Bruins plus 18 going into their game against California. Now Oregon State did have some problems with turnovers last week at UCLA they fumbled an option and on the last possession they also fumbled an option pitch luckily the Beavers recovered that fumble on the turf. Alexander sprinting out looking and uh, Towns missed him and now he will scoot to the 15 yard line and they say he went out near the 13. He'll still need another three maybe four yards for a first down. The Huskies defensively they've got Jabari Issa who is starting for Chris Campbell who is a marvelous defender at end as a senior. Issa has to pick it up. Linebackers how about Jason Chorak. He was the Pac-10 defense player of the year last year with 14 and a half sacks last season and then a great secondary probably the Pac 10's best Tony Parrish all Pac 10 there's Chorak he has four sacks this year nine behind the line of scrimmage and he's coming this time and the pass is dropped intended for Greg Ainsworth and tell me is is Tim Alexander right now throwing those short passes too hard well that Alexander does need to take a little off that ball he had a nice wide receiver screen set up to the wide side it's a half roll to the right. They're going to come back on the screen to Ainsworth. I see the ball. Nose is down. 
Ainsworth still should probably make that play, but as a quarterback, give your receiver an easy ball to handle, especially on the screen pass, because he's got some running to do after the catch. Cortez, 9 of 14 this year. This is well within his range from 30 yards out, and the field goal is up. It is good, and like last week against UCLA, the Beavers take the early lead, a 3-0 advantage for Oregon State with 8.16 to play in the first quarter. Back when going to the store could take days. Any sign of them? Folks were particular about what they brought back. They're here! Henry Weinhardt crafted a better beer with pure glacial water and Oregon's famous Cascade Hops. It's the news from town, Pete. Well, the price of gold is up. We got a new governor. You see, Westerners were known for giving a bit more. Now for the weather, here's Will. Thanks, Pete. A low pressure system moving in from the north will bring showers east of the Cascades. Look for cooler temperatures from Tillamook to Astoria, and now. There's a new movement in fitness, a new momentum to working out, a fun, low impact fat burn combining the best of what's come before. Momentum Elliptical Cross Trainer by Health Riders. Momentum's elliptical motion harnesses your natural momentum, giving an effective workout that tones, shapes, and burns calories and fat with a fun, natural movement no other machine can match. It seems to work your legs a lot better, and at the same time, you get to use your arms. Got my heart rate up. <laughs> it's identical to the one in the gym. Only Health Rider Momentum has this patented health club design with rear mechanism and adjustable ramp incline that gives you the cross-training benefits of two settings. Now it can be yours at home for thousands less. Trust Health Rider to give you club quality features you won't find on any other machine. Add the Momentum Elliptical Cross Trainer to your workouts for just $49 a month. Call now to order your Health Rider Momentum. It's the new movement in fitness. Boy, it is a pretty time of the year in the Pacific Northwest and a great location here in Corvallis. Leaves on the trees beginning to change, a packed house, something we have not seen in the past. But Oregon State, they believe they've turned their fortunes around with the football team. Three wins, all three in non-conference games. And now Jose Cortez, who just kicked a 30-yard field goal, his 10th and 15 tries this year will try and hit it out of the end zone again. Boy, he hammers it well. Payton lets it go. Washington, both times Cortez has kicked off, has had to start from their own 20 yard line. Look at that UCLA dominating California 35 17. We may see a great matchup with UCLA against Washington. And how about this? Wow. Arizona, what a test against Washington State that game in Pullman. Arizona led in that game 14 to nothing. They also had a 28 21 lead, but Ryan Leaf. And the undefeated Cougars never saying die up in Pullman. Here it is 3-0 Oregon State. Three wide receivers to the right side and they handle football off to Sheehy. He's past the 25, has the first down out near the 34-yard line. Great blocking by the true freshman Chad Ward and also Aaron Dalen, right tackle, and Cameron Cleland, the tight end. And Steve, you know, it's a 3 nothing game, and Oregon State's jumped out to a field goal lead in this one, but that is not good enough. Here's a replay of Sheehy testing the right side, the offensive line doing a great job of getting push up front. And Sheehy has great speed, but he also has the ability to punish you at the end of the run. He can lower that pad level and deliver a blow. And he is the eighth Husky to go over 2,000 yards. The all-time leader in Washington history, Napoleon Kaufman, 4,041. He now plays for the Oakland Raiders. They're going deep. Fred Coleman is there and simply dropped the football. Bashir Ilahi, they have been working him over four times. Heward went to him earlier on his first possession, and now he goes deep to Coleman and has him wide open. But Brock Heward is one of the best deep ball throwers in the college game. He throws the fades well. This is a streak, and Heward really thought he had this one. That's a flat-out drop. Fred Coleman is having a great year in 1997. He's had 19 receptions coming into the game. As you get a look at the reaction there, Heward saying, what's going on? I mean, that ball is on the money. But Coleman only had 19 receptions all the last year. He needs to make that catch. See, he smashes the middle right between Kruitz and Olsen and gains about four yards up near the 39-yard line. 
The tackle is made by Brian Rogers, the junior from Sugarland, Texas. And there is Rashawn Sheehy, who played at Foothill High School in Bakersfield, California. That won't be the only time you'll see a Husky open down the field on the outside. When you play eight men up front on defense to take away the run, you're really rolling the dice on the outside. And the Oregon State defensive backs have to come up with a huge game this afternoon if they hope to win. Look at this. Five wideouts. They throw over the middle. It is incomplete. And Washington will have to punt again. And Noki Brechterfield was right in the face of Brock Heward. Brechterfield was not only in the face of Heward, but Brian Rogers, the linebacker for Oregon State, was locked up man to man with Payton, and usually that's a mismatch. But a nice break on the ball by Rogers forces the incompletion, and the Huskies are going to have to punt. What a great beginning for Oregon State. Roddy Tompkins will receive the football. Roddy's been averaging 10 yards per return along this year of 26. Laughlin is the punter. And it is partially blocked. And Washington will down the football, giving the Beavers excellent field position at the 46 yard line. And Noke Brechterfield, the junior from Honolulu, their leader, got his right paw on that ball. Brechterfield comes right up the middle on this, comes free, and he's about a half yard away. From turning this into a big special teams play, he gets a piece of it, and as a result, only a 16-yard punt. Anoki Brechterfield, to me, is one of the best defensive players in the Pac-10 this year. I think he's a cinch to be first team in the conference. First down, 10 yards to go. Alexander giving it to Walker, and he is wrapped up. Wow, what a play by the defensive nose tackle. Suki Wiggs, the senior from O'Day High School in Seattle. The Wiggs really delivered a stroke on that tackle. That was unbelievable penetration by the senior. And as a linebacker, you always love to deliver a blow behind the line of scrimmage. That definitely was behind the line of scrimmage. Tim Alexander operating second and long. Now second and 11. Try Walker again. He gains about five to midfield. It will be third down and five yards to go as the tackle is made by Jason Chorak. And there is number 46 in the middle of your picture. He's a great All American. You know, he says, I think of myself as an outside linebacker, but really in our defense, I'm a defensive end. Yeah, he's a, not only a defensive end, he's a playmaker, he's a pass rusher, led the Pac 10 in sacks a year ago, second in tackles for loss. I already mentioned he was the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. And coming into this season, he was on everybody's first team All-American list. Alexander looking for that quarterback draw. He will not get the first down. He needed to get to the 44-yard line. So Fessler will come on to punt and try and push Washington deep in their own territory. Low angle, sitting in the shotgun. And this is a nice job of discipline by the Washington defense. They've studied the films. They know that Alexander is used as a runner just as much as the tailback in this offense. And they stay at home and make the play. And Oregon State, after three or four big plays in the first quarter, only a 3 nothing lead to show for it. This was a problem a week ago, a week ago against UCLA. They were unable to capitalize. Fessler hitting it away from Payton, who fumbled his last time. And a beautiful punt by Fessler, who was below average last week against the Bruins. Boy, they're painting their bodies here in Oregon State. They have a football fever. Steve Fiziak, David Norrie back in Corvallis, Oregon. The Beavers defense is again doing their job. They stop a fourth down play. They block a punt. And now they push Washington's offense back. But they need to capitalize on the opportunities their defense has been giving them. Yeah, the Beavers offense has to hold up their end of the bargain, and they have not done that this season. I mentioned last week against UCLA, countless opportunities in the first half, unable to convert. Sheehy, not much near the 10-yard line. Let's go down in the field to Larry Burnett. Well, as you might expect, there's a lot of excitement here on the Oregon State sideline, and some congratulations for Jose Cortez, who kicked the field goal 
he deserves congratulations for a lot more. He was born in El Salvador during a civil war, got out of that country for safety reasons, moved to Van Nuys, California when he was 15, didn't speak English, but managed to finish high school, went to L.A. Valley College, played football there, and at night had to work in an adult video store. He sent out tapes. Oregon State liked them. No, not those tapes. Football <laughs> tapes. Up to you guys. <laughs> Larry, you're unbelievable. Sheehy around the sideline, short of the first down. But the difference in this game right now is that kicker he talked about, Jose Cortez, the 30-yard field goal. There is Rashawn Sheehy. Heward has been able to hand the ball off to him, get him wide a couple of times. But Washington had an opportunity to take the lead if Fred Coleman holds on to Heward's deep pass. And Washington is such a powerful offensive front. They've got such great skill players on the outside. It's only a matter of time before they score. Oregon State, as we said, Steve, so many big plays early, but only a field goal lead to show for. It is third and short. Heward with all kinds of time throws it to his fullback. Not much there. They do not get the first down. There's a fumble on the play, but I believe the man was already down, so it will still be Huskies football. Fourth down, and they will be forced to punt once again. So Heward's great offense that has been averaging 35 points per game is shut down again. And this play is read very early by the Oregon State defense. Look at all the black jerseys rallying to the ball. That's the trademark of this Oregon State defense under Greg Newhouse, a defensive coordinator. And I count six or seven black jerseys in the picture. And this Oregon State defense may be undersized, but they certainly get after the football. 11 men to the football is their theme. Now it is Oregon State's responsibility to take advantage of these opportunities their defense has given them Roddy Tompkins wow oh is there some white shirts right in his face right away but again the Beavers will have good field position to start with Roddy Tompkins the sophomore from Victoria Texas again an excellent crowd so many traveled down from Seattle we understand about 8,000 Husky alums came down from Portland. Well, the Huskies always travel the best. You, you talk about traveling your contingent. What a great support group up in Seattle. That is a Husky town. And no matter where they go on the road, you'll see a big group dressed in purple following them. Not a lot to cheer about, though, here in Corvallis early. Alexander working shotgun on first down. He's going to go for the home run. Ainsworth is out there. It's incomplete at the 13-yard line. There is a flag down, though. Ainsworth had Mel Miller beat. Miller and Jermaine Smith are excellent man cover cornerbacks, but Ainsworth was able to get the sideline on him. Ainsworth not only had Miller beat. On the defense. 15 yards in the previous spot, automatic first down. Ainsworth not only had Miller beat, he had Miller beat early. And Alexander's got to get this ball up a count earlier. This ball's thrown late, and it gives Miller an opportunity to recover on the outside. The ball's underthrown, and Miller's beat so badly, he doesn't have time to look back for the football. He makes a play on the man, not the football. Easy call to make on the outside, and it was the proper call. And I wonder if the sun was a factor there, because when he turned around, you could see the shadows where the sun was staring him right in the face. I think the underthrow of the ball was the big factor there. Alexander's got to get the ball up early. First and 10. Alexander will run. He is through to the 30. To the 25. Well, Randy Hart and Jim Lambright know what this kid is going to do, but he is so quick with that 4-4 speed, and there are not many quarterbacks in the nation as quick as this guy. Well, Alexander is a huge part of the Oregon State running game. They run counters. They run misdirection plays and right here you'll see a draw play open up the middle they set up in the pass and then all of a sudden he runs the draw and Tony Parrish the big safety is the last line of defense against Oregon State now Ricky Walker for a yard to the 23 yard line will be second down and nine Suki Wiggs in that area along with Mac Tuiaia 
running Mike Jaycott, the fullback. The fullback for Nebraska had a huge game against Washington and was quite responsible in their 27 14 victory. Yeah, I won't be surprised to see Oregon State use a fullback today. The fullback for Nebraska ran for 129 yards, and at times, the Husky eight man defensive front has been vulnerable up the middle. Second and nine. Alexander going deep, incomplete. And Tim has had a difficult time completing his passes. He came into this game completing 52 percent of the year. First three seasons at Oregon State he only completed 36 percent but that was out of the wishbone offense. Yeah, that's the big challenge though for Oregon State and basically the weakness of this offense is second and long and third and long situations. You get a look at the passing numbers. Alexander has thrown the ball more this year than he had in the three years previous. But Oregon State is really challenged when they face these third long situations. Alexander scrambling. He'll throw. And he had a man wide open, Robert Prescott, in the right flat. But Alexander was under such heavy pressure from Jason Chorak that he had to throw it away. It will be fourth down. And Cortez will come on again to try and give the Beavers a six point lead. Well, the last meeting these two teams had, Washington trailed 3 0 after one quarter, and then the Huskies scored 42 unanswered points. They can do that, so it is just like Mike Riley said our offense has to support our defense. They can't be on the field 40 minutes and expect to win this game. Cortez from 40. No good. Jose Cortez thought he had it but apparently it drifted over the upright and why so the Beavers hold on to a three nothing lead but certainly not enough against this potent Washington offense Cortez is going to hit this and just a little right to left action on it and look at the officials underneath the upright they have to look at each other this is not an easy call the ball just hooking to the left as it reaches that upright. And once again, Cortez feeling like he made it, and then all of a sudden he realizes, no, it's still a 3-0 lead. And with all the positive plays that the Beavers have made in this football game in the first quarter, with 1.41 to go in the first quarter, only a 3-0 lead, and that does not bode well for the Beavers. So Heward will go back to work. She, he is through. He is past Elihi, and he tries to get past the free safety Terrence Carroll before he's finally ridden down to the 45-yard line, a gain of 25 for Rashawn Sheehy. And that is the 30th play this year that Washington has for 25 or more yards. Washington, when they line up in the single back set, keep an eye on Sheehy. He's going to flow to the right, and then he's going to come right back here against Flo to set up a nice run. Look at the big guys working up front. Olsen, Krutz, and a nice cut back into the open field for a big game for Sheehy. Flag is down, I believe Oregon State was offside. Oregon State will pick up the loose football and run it back. And they have it inside the 27-yard line. Now Heward comes up with the Oregon State fumble, but I believe this is coming back. I know there was an Oregon State Beaver in the neutral zone, but was he drawn off? How about this though Jim Lambright's team comes in David with five turnovers in the entire season they fumble it earlier they fumble it again here my goodness that's what's so tough about playing the Huskies they've got all the weapons offsides on the defense yeah, so the play and the fumble and the return and even the recovery by the Huskies is all a moot point Washington's going to take the offsides and it'll be first and five for Washington out near midfield and I was going to say, Steve, is you have so many weapons on offense. You have Heward, you have Sheehy, you have Payton and Coleman on the outside. You got the two All-Americans up front on the offensive line. But what makes it so difficult playing against the University of Washington is that they take care of the football. Coming into this game, only four fumbles and one interception, a total of five turnovers given up all year long by Washington. Heward will keep it on the ground. Sheehy is through. He is past 
the 45 yard line for a first down. It's at Oregon State sideline, their offensive line needs to help out. I mean, I, I think if they can average just three and a half yards per carry, they've got a good chance of winning this game. Well, the offense has to step up, and Mike Riley understands when you're operating against the Washington eight-man defensive front, you've got to make some throws in the passing game. Alexander has not been able to do that. And as we've said time and time again, it's only a matter of time before Washington strikes on offense. Oh, good. Forced by the defensive line that time. It looked like Riley and Bob McCain was there. The two inside players and Anoki Brechterfield. You see number 56 who is everywhere, but Sheehy already with 83 yards rushing. And we still have 20 seconds remaining in the first period. Brechterfield has talked in the last couple weeks about how it's frustrating for him and for his defensive teammates to make big play after big play, then turn the ball over to the offense and have nothing to show for it. Hewitt play action. He's looking deep downfield. Incomplete. He had Payton wide open at the 25-yard line. That is the final play of the first period. It is won by Oregon State. But like last year, the score is just 3-0 after one. You've done the math and figured out that you can consolidate bills and still afford to make some home improvements. But the lenders tell you that you don't have enough equity. Hi, I'm Dan Marino. If this has happened to you, call First Plus Financial at 1-800-510-PLUS. They'll lend you up to 125% of the value of your home, less your first mortgage balance. There's no application fees, and you'll get an answer before you hang up. Don't listen to those other lenders. Call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. This simple-looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. It can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body. Because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym for 1997 and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. It at 6'9", he wasn't expected to be more than a good basketball player. After four years of college, he became a good citizen. A.C. Green, a star player who's earned two NBA championships, the respect of his teammates for his scholarships and good community works, and an OSU degree. Just a reminder that OSU students are usually most valuable players in life. Fiziak, David Norrie, Larry Burnett with you at Parker Stadium in Corvallis. 3 0. Beavers on a 30 yard field goal by Jose Cortez. Well, they have been enjoying this football game and this football team this season. 3 30 start here, West Coast time today. And time to take a nap. Big third down and 10. Fred Coleman goes in motion. Heward play action pass. He throws complete first down at the 32 yard line. Jerome Payton. Well, today's game summary is brought to you by Henry Weinhardt's private reserve. Washington had that fumble on a punt that led to Oregon State's field goal. Sheehy, 83 yards rushing, he passes the 2000 mark, and Rectorfield blocked a punt. Look at that field position. Oregon State has had their opportunities. Right now, Washington straight. Washington trying to take the lead. Payton with three catches in the game for 20 yards. Sheehy, not much. He makes 
about four on his own before he's pulled down by Aaron Wells and Brian Jones. There is she. He's closing in on 90 yards rushing already. If you go back two plays on that big third and ten, how about Heward's arm strength? I mean, just a flick of the arm to the outside gets the ball to Payton. Big first down, and now all of a sudden Washington threatening to take the lead. And this is what Brock likes to be in, second and five. Sheehy's running well. Play action will work, but they'll go with no Sheehy. They'll spread everybody out. And Sean is to the right in single coverage. Brock is looking the other way, and he will be sacked. Jason McGayo, there is a flag on the play, and Brock Hewitt is saying, hey, it's Oregon State's penalty. Well, the question is, are the Beavers going to get hit with a face mask penalty on this play? And if they are, that's a big break for Washington because the Beavers had Heward wrapped up. The Huskies have done the best job in the Pac-10 this season protecting the quarterback. Washington had only given up nine sacks coming into this ballgame. And that was number one in the Pac-10 conference. There still is some discussion on the field with that referee, McFerrin. Five yard face mask on the tackle. That'll be enforced from the previous spot. That five yards will be a first down. Oregon State has Heward wrapped up in the backfield. And there you see the face mask. Five yard penalty, but still a first down. It was Jason Magayo who grabbed a hold of the face mask. And Heward said, That's right. That's the. That's the right call and big break for the Huskies. They have a first down at the 22 of Oregon State. And there they go. And I believe that Benji Olsen lifted off early. And uh, Brian Rogers, the outside linebacker, just came up and lifted him up. No, I don't think so. I think this is going to go against Oregon State. It looked like Benji came out early, David. I think Benji came up early because he was hit early. Look at Oregon State reacting to the cadence. The, oh, only, right. man, the only man to move is Crute snapping the ball. It's a smart play by the All-American center. Contact offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Now that's an easy call. Washington came up to the line of scrimmage, and that's a design play. They were trying to draw Oregon State players into the neutral zone. They did, and Crute's a nice job of picking up those players with his peripheral vision. Snapping the football, and now Heward's operating first and five. And Oregon State with their third penalty. Easy for you. Yeah. I thought Olsen moved in the replay. She clearly showed he go, stayed go put. Go. Benji yeah. may have a couple words for you after this game, Steve. <laughs> There's Olin Krutz. That's the guy I don't want to get in trouble with. You remember what was it? Last year, he and Suki Wiggs got into it. And Suki wound up with a broken jaw and didn't play much of the year. Well documented tussle in the locker room. And how about Crutes last week against Arizona? Player of the game. And just absolutely dominated Joe Salavea, the defensive lineman for Arizona. Right now, I think Charles McFerrin is talking to both sides because they have been mixing it up a bit after the whistle has blown. You're absolutely right. Co captain Sheehy, Brechter Field, also a captain for Oregon State. The referee getting those guys together and say, saying, hey, we're well into the second quarter. Let's clean it up. Let's play football. Or I'm going to start tossing some players out of this ball game. First and five. Coleman, Payton to the left. Double tight end for Washington. Sheehy goes left to the 10 yard line and a first down for the Huskies. It'll be first and goal. Let's go down to Larry. Before the game, the referees told both coaches, warn your players, we will not allow any hands in the cages. In other words, none of that face masking stuff. They're going to call it. They're going to make it happen. They also said, no stances in the end zone, no celebrating. We don't want to call that one, but if it happens, we're going to call it. So watch out for that, too. We have already seen a lot of emotion early in this game, and we have played 17 minutes. First and goal from the six-yard line. Sheehy met. Brian Rogers, the outside linebacker. Wow, he was in there quickly. 
Brian Rogers leads Oregon State in tackles coming into this game. He had a big game last week down in Los Angeles at the Rose Bowl against the Bruins. He was all over the field, and he just beats his man outside here with quickness. That's the offensive tackle on the right side, Aaron Dalen, and Rogers with quickness and speed just discards him and makes the play behind the line of scrimmage. So it looks like Heward will go to the air. He looks left, throws that way. Payton is down to the two-yard line. That is Jerome's fourth catch in this game. Now his 36th this year. You want to see some hitting in the Pac-10 conference. Watch number 43, Brian Jones. Payton's going to leave his feet. Hello. And the first thing that hits the ground is Payton's helmet. That's some physical football in the red zone and you get a look at the efficiency of the Huskies inside the 20 yard line. 30 possessions in there. 19 have been for six. Payton comes back in. Coleman goes with him to the right. Tuiasasopo on the field and he calls a timeout. Marcus Tuiasasopo is the backup quarterback. He came sprinting on the field to call a timeout on this important third and goal from the two. We will come right back with Oregon State leading 3 0. 12 09 to play first half. Win two free tickets to the 98 Rose Bowl game and many more fun prizes. Point your web browser to the Pac 10's official website at you see the address. Let's now go to the field where it is third and goal from the two. Look out, Heward has been known to spring a quarterback draw from time to time. No backs in the backfield. And they really only have three interior linemen defensively. Heward had an opening, he throws, and he's almost picked off. Cleveland was in the end zone. Now they say there was interference on Oregon State. Now this is going to be a first down Huskies. Cameron Cleland just hooking up about three yards deep in the end zone. And the back judge ruled the contact came early. Pass interference on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Three critical penalties on this drive. Three-step drop. Cleland hooking up in the end zone. And there's the hand inside. Terrence Carroll, the free safety. Not a lot of contact, but enough contact to draw the flag and get ready to see Rashawn Sheehy pound at the middle of this defense. I'll say not a lot of contact. Terrence Carroll just barely had a piece of him. Now he will walk off the field. Now Carroll didn't make much contact on that play, but as Cameron Cleland hooked up in the end zone, it was very clear that Carroll had that right arm hooked around the jersey in front of Cameron Cleland, and that's what was called. So now it will be first and goal from the one. The Oregon State defensive staff isn't going to be too happy about that call. If you're a, a guy with a defensive frame of mind and on a football team, you're going to say, hey, that's good defense. An offensive player is going to say, hey, the contact came early. Regardless, it doesn't matter. First down, Huskies. Goal to go. From the one-yard line, Conniff and Sheehy with a double tight end and H back to the right. Sheehy leaps the top. He is in for the Husky touchdown. So Washington has their first lead of the game on the seventh rushing touchdown by Rashawn Sheehy this year. And the officials are going to rule that Rashawn Sheehy had possession as he crossed the goal line. The ball clearly came loose, and when Sheehy landed in the end zone, he did not have possession of the football. And look at Olin Krutz. He is slow in getting up and needs help off the field from Jeremy Brigham and Rashawn Sheehy. The question here is, does Sheehy have penetration before the ball comes loose? I don't know. Wow. Watch a straight on view here. The helmet right on the football. Actually, it's an elbow delivered by Armand Hatcher, the strong safety, and that ball came loose. Now here's the angle. That's a fumble. That is not a touchdown. Well, Oregon State did not get one break on that drive. And Washington 
turn the ball over there. That should not be a touchdown for the Huskers. Point after touchdown is on the way by Nick Lentz. It is good, and Washington, with help from the officials, have taken a 7-3 lead over Oregon State, and some boos come cascading down from Parker Stadium. Okay, here's the plane of the goal line right here, and watch Rashawn Sheehy as he moves forward. The handoff from Heward up and over the top, and let's see if we can freeze it right here. There's the ball. And it's very clear that the ball comes loose before he breaks the plane. That is not a touchdown. So Washington has the lead, 7-3. to three, When it should be Oregon State's football at the 20-yard line, and the Beavers leading. 3-0, but she he scores his eighth touchdown this year, his seventh rushing, and Washington is in front for the first time with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. It took them 77 yards. They score in the one-yard run by Rashan. Our scoring drive brought to you by Mazda. And there is Terrence Carroll, who was helped off the field after that pass interference call against Cameron Cleland, and he has taken his right shoe off not sure if it is an ankle injury, foot injury that he has suffered, but right now Carroll is out, and that means they might move Larry Bump City Bumpus to a safety position. Yeah, that's awfully tough. When you're playing at home in Corvallis, there's obviously a disparity in the talent level between these two teams. Oregon State appears to have stopped Washington on a third down play, third and goal. Pass interference is ruled, and then the Beavers force a fumble before Rashawn Sheehy goes up and over the top. The Beavers recover in the end zone, but it's ruled a touchdown. Not good work by this officiating crew here in the second quarter. So now Washington will kick off. Nick Lentz will kick off to Armin Hatcher and Jason Dandridge. Dandridge is the speedster, number 29, runs a 4 4 40. And you know, Steve, the back judge has to pick that up. From the left side of the field, it was very clear, very clear view of that ball coming loose. Sean Sheehy tried to score. Lentz hits it deep, and it will be taken and run out of the end zone. A change taken, and Hatcher is out past the 20. Out to the 28-yard line and hammered down there. Armin hammered down at the 28, and that is where the Beavers will have a first and 10. Well, as a return man, if your momentum carries you into the end zone, as it does right here, you don't have to bring the ball out. You can down it in the end zone, and it's a touchback. Hatcher is confused, and he feels like he has to bring that ball out. And as it works out, he gives Oregon State better field position than the 20-yard line. Now Alexander must get his offense going, and they hand the ball off to Jason Dandridge, who gets it to the 30, only a gain of two. It will be second down and eight yards to go. Well, Randy Hart, who's the defensive coordinator for uh, the Washington Huskies, he was telling us that he really feels they've got to hold down Alexander. You might remember what happened in 1995 when Alexander went off on the Huskies for 182 yards rushing, 140 passing. He ran for two touchdowns, and the Huskies were barely able to escape with a 26-16 victory. That 182 yards that Alexander gained back in 1995 was the best rushing performance by a Beaver or a Washington Husky in the 81 year history of this series. Top rushing effort handed in by a quarterback. And that was his first college start. Here he is a veteran facing a second and eight. He completes his first pass for a first down to Joe Kekendall. Alexander now one for five passing. Lester Towns on the tackle. And when you play against the Washington eight-man front, you're not going to be able to run the football at them play after play. you got to take advantage in first and second down situations in obvious run situations to pass the football. The half roll to the left, and look at the separation by Kuykendall. Nice job of beating Towns to the outside in a well-thrown ball. So now they'll run it to Dandridge, and he is hit and knocked down at the 50-yard line. 
Jason Chorak, Jerry Jensen were there. And Dandridge, a two yard gain. Again, it will be second and eight. Not too surprising to see some of the difficulties and some of the confusion for Washington on offense in the first half. Same thing happened to UCLA last week at the Rose Bowl. The Oregon State defense presents some different problems. And now it's a matter of Tim Alexander and the Oregon State Beaver offense of showing something here. They've got to step up or Washington's going to run away and hide. Alexander, quarterback draw, not much. Maybe two yards to the 47 yard line. Ryan Julian, the true freshman from Idaho Falls, made the hit and stop on Tim Alexander. Alexander told you last week in his game against UCLA how his high school rival was the great Nebraska quarterback, Tommy Frazier. And they're very good friends. And Tim has been like in the Frazier style. He led the Cornhuskers to back to back national championships. Back, Mike Jacock off of the right side. Blitz is on. They throw underneath. It is Jacock with the catch and the first down for Oregon State. And then a very late flag. And I believe it will go against Jason Jorak. Number 45, Jacock. He came onto the field late. That was a late substitution. And he tapped wide receiver Ainsworth on the back, Greg Ainsworth, and said, hey, I'm in for you right here. And he makes a nice Rolling play. Rolling the passer on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the last run. Wow. Well, Jaycott came in at that blocking back position, and he just hooked up at about two or three yards depth. Perfectly thrown ball by Alexander. And Jason Chorak, Lambright's All-American, gets flagged for a late hit. And David, early in the game, you were a little critical of Tim Alexander throwing the short passes too hard. And you said he's got to take something off. It looked like he threw a little softer pass that time. Oh, that was a beautiful ball. And there was a lot of pressure. This University of Washington eight-man front, especially in third down situations, they throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. Bob McCain off on the sideline, getting work on that left shoulder. Dandridge, nothing there. Boy, he was wrapped up immediately by Suki Wiggs and Mac Tuiaea. With Bob McCain in some pain. Bob was the junior from Mesa Community College, the oldest player in the team at 25, left for two years on a Mormon mission. That looks like maybe a shoulder injury or a sort of separation. You're wrapping that left arm it really indicates a. A collarbone or a left shoulder injury. Good drive, impressively executed by Tim Alexander. Now on second down, he runs the quarterback draw again. Pushes his way past the 20 to the 19, a gain of three on the play. Will be second down and six yards to go. But Oregon State has now lost on the season Alex Sawatsky and probably Bob McCain for this game. So that's two starting defensive linemen that could hurt them. Yeah, Sawatsky went down in the Utah State game. McCain has played very spirited. Mike Riley, the head coach at Oregon State, likes to rotate a lot of guys up front defensively. Keep them fresh. They're undersized. So make sure they have fresh feet. One for five, converting third downs. This will be a third and six. And timeout is taken. Washington has used two. Oregon State takes their first. And we will take a timeout as well with the Huskies leading the Beavers. Seven to three. Tim Alexander facing a third and six. Didn't play much last week against UCLA because of a bursa sack problem in his right elbow. He seems to be healthy. Came back on Sunday and had a full good week of practice. Mike Riley needs him because he is such a big part of this offense. Alexander looking downfield. Peckendall was open. He was shoved while the ball was in the air, but no flags are thrown. And I think Roddy Tompkins is asking him, were you interfered? And it appeared that Marcus Hairston, the inside linebacker who had to cover the tight end, may have held him. But 
Instead, it is fourth and six, and Cortez will come on to try and pull them within one. And the Beaver defense was hit with a big third and goal pass interference penalty on the last Husky possession. There's some hand fighting going into the end zone. Could have been pass interference, but I don't think so. Good call, good no call. They're faking the field goal. They go for the first down. the holder rolling to his left and look at this you talk about fitting a ball into a tight space I mean, Schmidtke had no room to work with there he threw that in through a three foot by three foot window big first down for Oregon State and what a gamble you gotta love Mike Riley on, Oregon, State. Their second. Oregon State will use their second timeout and Riley will talk with his dangerous quarterback, Tim Alexander. Oregon State trying to reclaim the lead. Oregon State down by four will try and reclaim the lead. They have a first and goal at the seven yard line of Washington. Alexander will move over center. He has worked out of the shotgun a lot this afternoon. He gives it to Walker, and he is smothered back at the 10-yard line. Boy, Tui Aiea, Jason Chorak, and Marcus Harrison smelled that play from the very beginning. Half roll action by Alexander to his right. The underneath handoff to Ricky Walker. And there's Chorak getting penetration. Tui Aiea. Uh, this eight-man defensive front for Washington. Such talent. Joe Kuykendall is the injured Oregon State player on the field. Meantime, from Pullman, Washington, look at that in overtime. Washington State still unbeaten. Congratulations to Mike Price as the Washington State Cougars go to 7-0 oh on the year. A dramatic win over Arizona when they were down early, 14-0 in that game. Cougars remain undefeated, as you said, Steve. And Arizona apparently went for two in overtime. They didn't need to either. That was the first round of overtime, the first possessions for each team. And in Seattle, they're already talking about the Apple Cup. Now that could be a huge game. And it's going to be played in Seattle this year, as you said. November 22nd. Can you imagine if the Cougars go into that game at 10 and 0? It's hard to imagine, but the Cougars, you know, they're right, the, both. Washington and Washington State for the first time in history as you see Kuykendall get up to his feet. Boy, that's a big loss. I mean, you know, in the past in the wishbone, Kuykendall always played that extra tackle. He was a tight end, but in the wishbone, he was really a blocking player. He goes 6'5", 270. Now they have to come with the true freshman, Martin Maurer, who made the great catch to give them the first down on the fake field goal. But Martin Maurer. Not nearly as big and as strong a blocker as Kuykendall is. Remember Kuykendall made the big catch earlier in the drive to keep the drive alive and it doesn't look like Kuykendall's returning too soon. But I was going to say Steve for the first time in history Washington Washington State both in the top 10 in the rankings. Alexander looking to the right zone coverage that way. He throws back left catch is made and tight roping down the sideline. Touchdown, Mike Jaycock. What did you call them in years past, David? Pesky beavers. Boy, they have been pesky and a thorn in the side of these husky dogs. Jay Cott is only five foot eight, but he goes 205 pounds. He made a big pack, big catch on third down early in this drive to keep the beavers rolling. And that is a super job of breaking a tackle along the sideline and moving the ball in for six. 
And Cortez with the point after touchdown, and I think even Husky fans have to be amazed at what has happened at Oregon State with Mike Riley taking a chance on that big field goal and coming back with this touchdown. Watch Alexander. He gives Jay Cott a nice handle, and then Jermaine Smith not strong enough. That is a great play by Jay Cott, the senior, to bring in the football. I mean, how did he keep his feet in bounds? How did Jermaine Smith miss that tackle? Well, he says thank you to the man upstairs, but again, no celebrating as the officials have been very aggressive on any calls about celebration. But Jay Cott giving Oregon State a 10 to 7 lead as we have seven minutes to play here in the first half. How about the guts of that burglar, Mike Riley? Well, how about the fake field goal? How about lining up for the field goal and the fake, the play by Schmitke to Maurer? They love Riley here in Corvallis, and, and why not? They play Stanford and Arizona State to three-point games earlier in the year. Here's a short kick. It is taken by Payton. He's got an angle left. And cut down at the 32-yard line. Oregon State with a pretty impressive scoring drive 72 yards in 11 plays and for Tim Alexander only his second touchdown pass this year seven yards to Jaycott and that was a badly needed drive for Oregon State we talked about last week the Beavers down at, at UCLA playing at the Rose Bowl they dominated the first half of that football game statistically and still they trailed 14 to 3 at halftime the offense could not come through what a big drive for Oregon State to score for the first time in two ball games. Brock Heward showing a passing front. Instead, he'll give that football to his running back, Mark Maurice Shaw, and Shaw is up near the 40-yard line. Maurice more of a inside runner, where she he is uh, more of a guy who can bounce outside. That's right. And, and when I say Oregon State scoring for the first time in the last two ball games, I mean scoring a touchdown in a meaningful situation. They scored a touchdown late last week when the game was 30. Five, actually 34 to three, but uh, yeah, you talk about Shaw, he gives Washington a nice change up at tailback running in between the tackles. Second and three. Shaw gets it again. He hammers his way for a first down at the 44 yard line. Let's go to Larry. All right, here on the sidelines now, and Joe Kuykendall is being worked on by the team physician. They're working on his left knee. Defensive end Bob McCain has been taken inside the locker room to get x-rays. He either has a shoulder separation or possibly a broken collarbone. We'll know more in the second half. Let's go back upstairs. Boy, that is a big loss. Kuykendall, McCain, two starters. Right now, Washington with a first down at their own 43 and a half yard line. Three wide outs left. Shaw's going to get it again, and he pulls his way for a couple, but not much. As Gariley, who has had just a very good first half, helping out with Brian Rogers on the tackle. Sean Ball also in the game. And there's that defense for Washington. You know, it's, it's got to be hard to prepare for an option game when, when most of the Pac-10 schools have gone with the wide open West Coast offenses. Well, that's right. Oregon State not running too many option plays per se in this game, but very tough to prepare for a Canadian Football League type offense with an active quarterback like Alexander. Second and eight. Here with time. Boy, he's got a pretty pass. He just kind of flicked that ball to the left sideline and it traveled a good 30 yards. Yeah, he doesn't fight the ball when he throws it. He has plenty of arm strength. And what's so impressive is look at how tall he is. He stays up on top of the ball and he's able to throw the ball over the heads of the underneath defenders. And when you can make the ball behave for you, when you can make that ball loop out over the heads of the linebackers and the underneath defenders, and you really have a gift because there's no question Heward can put mustard on it when he needs to. Both Coleman and Payton will be in single coverage. And Heward will hand the ball off to Maurice Shaw, who is through for the first down to the 32-yard line. Terrence Carroll, who was banged up early, back in there. Well, he is very close to a first down, but let's see where they mark the football. I think he'll be a little shy. Yeah, a good half yard shy. 
We talked about the changeup of Maurice Shaw coming in at tailback. He's had a lot of quality playing time this year. He came into the game with 67 rushing attempts. He averages about four and a half yards a carry. And if you combine Sheehy and Shaw, they're averaging over 160 yards a game at that tailback position. They have already almost 120 yards rushing combined in this first half. Pure going deep. Intercepted. Terrence Carroll. on the Washington sideline nothing but celebration on the Beaver sideline well, Heward only had one interception all season long coming into this game but he failed to keep track of the free safety Terrence Carroll had great depth and as a quarterback there's a frustration on his face but Heward made a mistake there you always have to account for the free safety the center fielder Carroll had great depth and a nice play to turn the ball back over to his offense now first and ten, Alexander will scramble, doesn't get much, will lose yardage on the play. David, I go back to a conversation we had yesterday. Brock, you were, you were talking about he is so great with the fade ball. You think one of the best fade ball passers in the game, great with the slant. But what about his second, third options? Well, he, he's, so, he's so good, and you look at his stats, they're 8 for 12, not bad numbers, only a second interception on the year. He throws the deep routes very well, but the way that you get to, to Heward is you make him come to the second and third choice in his offensive read. Pretty tough to do, though, because those guys are talented on the outside. Chorak in the face. The pass is caught up to the 25-yard line for Oregon State, and again... Alexander going to his backs John Olazicic there is a flag down on the field but on the interception it looked to me as Brock was looking left that wasn't there his second option may have been deep. Now it looks like Oregon State's going to get hit with an illegal man downfield an ineligible receiver downfield and getting back to the interception Steve you're talking about. Payton was on a post route. Illahi, the cornerback, had man-to-man -man responsibility, but there was a free safety. It was a man-free coverage, and Heward never picked up the free safety in his vision. There's Greg Newhouse, the defensive coordinator, and what a game his defense has played here in the first half. He's a fiery guy. He's had a lot ex of experience in the Canadian Football League. And look at the attentiveness of these players on the sidelines. They are all buying into this defensive concept. Ineligible downfield on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Well, outside that 72-yard drive that Tim Alexander led his team on, they have made a lot of mistakes on offense. And you know what happened on that last play, and Riley has to be a little bit upset about this. Oregon State set up a screen play, and by design, offensive linemen are free to release downfield as long as the ball is completed behind the line of scrimmage. But the Oregon State receiver drifted over the line of scrimmage and and now all of a sudden if those offensive linemen are releasing downfield they're going to get called for it. and here comes Washington look how wide they split the ends they might be blitzing Nigel Burton as well they will bring Burton and they also bring a linebacker and there's the deep pass incomplete to Greg Ainsworth well, Alexander was really punished by Marcus Harrison. They blitzed the strong safety. They blitzed the middle linebacker. The Washington defense is not only designed to come up with sacks, it's designed to punish you after the throw. And Chorak coming on the blitz. A great job by Marcus Harrison getting there first. And Harrison delivered a nice blow in the pocket. You want the quarterback to feel it every time you're in his presence. Well, they had two great inside backers last year in John Fiala and Ink Aliaga. And they've got good ones in Lester Towns replacing Ink Aliaga. Makes the tackle here, so Oregon State will be forced to punt with two minutes and 48 seconds remaining in this first half. Nice There's call. Lester Towns. As Lester Towns runs off the field there. Towns is going to add some great athleticism to this linebacking core for Washington over the next couple of years. 
Nice third down call by Oregon State. They're a safe pass. Keep the clock running. Clock ticking down on two minutes. And Oregon State clinging to a three-point lead. Fast lose punt. This is Fred Coleman. And Coleman is knocked down at the 45-yard line. Washington will start their offense from that point. Pac-10 Conference football is brought to you by GTE, the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA. And by Mazda, experienced cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. Steve Biziak, David Norrie, Larry Burnett with you at Parker Stadium in Corvallis, where the score is surprising. Oregon State 10, Washington 7. But Brock Heward has the football back, and he has Rashawn Sheehy back as running back. Here throwing it to Coleman. Coleman wide open, gets the first down, and is to the 41 yard line in Oregon State territory. Nice job by Washington stretching the pass defense laterally, leaving Coleman out on the sideline. And you have a receiver that wide open, Heward's going to hit him every time. You know, Scott Linehan, his offensive coordinator, said Oregon State's defense plays so hard all the time. And he really feels like that is why they frustrated Cade McDowell last week, and I think they're frustrating Brock Hewitt here. Coleman has it broken up by Illahi. Very close to pass interference, but Illahi played the ball and not the man perfectly. Exactly. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head, and that is really a nice play by Illahi on the outside to recover against Coleman. And Damon Hewer, number seven might be the best at throwing the fade ball. And for our viewers, the fade is the deep route along the sideline. The quarterback tries to push the receiver to the outside with the throw. Very tough to defense as you get a look at Illahi number 21. But Illahi played that tough along the sideline. He recovered, and he got his eyes back to the football to make the play. It will be second down and 10. 45. They want the... Uh, Game clock reset to 145. Right now it shows 144. Remember, reset Washington. Reset the clock to 145. Remember, the Huskies. Thank you. Huskies only have one timeout left in this half. They've already burned two timeouts, and that hurt them. When they stopped Oregon State on the third down play, when the Beavers had the ball, they had to let the clock run. Had his foot stepped on. I'm not sure it was Benji Olsen when he stepped back, stepped right on Brock Hewitt's foot. It will be third down and about 13 yards to go. Well, as a quarterback, you get those big heavies up in front of you, and if they make a misstep, you're pinned. And I think this is Olin Cruz. Nope, it's the left guard. That's Benji Olsen. Actually, that's Chad Ward, number 71, the true freshman playing at the strong guard spot. Chad Ward stepped on Heward's foot, and that is painful. If you've ever played quarterback and you get a 300-pounder planting two or three cleats on the top of your foot, it's not a lot of fun. And I think he landed right on the one that ate the roast beef. Yeah, and even worse for Washington, worse than the pain that Heward's experiencing right now on the sideline is the fact that the Huskies had to use their final timeout. Minute 43 to go. You know, Brock Heward has been so important this year, but as Mike Riley said, to win this game, to beat Washington, we had to control the run. They haven't done that. 120 yards rushing by Sheehy and Shaw. They have to eliminate the big hit. He meant the big plays. They've been able to do that in the game. And they also said, interestingly, control the tight end. Cam Cleveland has not been a factor in this game. That's a good point. And, and when you look at Washington in this third and long situation, watch for the crossing routes across the middle and also keep an eye out for the screen. Washington notorious for running the screen play well in these types of situations. And Sheehy, a great receiver, play action pass. Brock sets up, goes deep, catch is made, first down! 
What a great throw by Brock Huard. And like I said, Washington, as, as they go with the no huddle, they're going to look to the crossing route or the screen play, and Payton stretching to the outside, bringing the dig route right back into the middle of the field. Perfect ball by Hewitt. I am so impressed with his ability to make the tough throws down the football field. Payton this time goes to the left, and Brock Hewer just throws the ball to stop the clock. I don't understand that. 132 left. That's plenty of time. I don't understand why you throw the ball to the ground in that situation with a minute and a half to go. Now let's take a look at the big first down play. Payton's going to be at the top of the screen. He's going to get good press upfield and then bring it back into the center of the field on the dig route. Heward with the five-step drop. And then a beautifully thrown ball to the inside. Great job between quarterback and wide receiver in the passing game. Now second and ten. Coleman goes in motion. You were dumping it off. Sheehy skips down the left sideline to about the 12 yard line. He'll stop the clock with 126 left in the first half. And again, Oregon State leading by three. Going back to that first down play, Steve, I said, I can't believe you throw the ball to the turf in that situation. There's a minute and a half to go in the first half. Why not make the call at the line of scrimmage to one of your favorite pass plays in your two-minute scheme and then run the play? Don't waste a, don't waste a first down. Don't waste an opportunity there. Now third down and five. Reed goes in motion. They throw it to Mike. It's incomplete at the eight-yard line. And it was well covered by Armin Hatcher and Andre Holland. So the field goal unit comes on, but we've got to go back to that wasted throw by Brock Heward on first down. Not good execution here. This ball is thrown a little bit early. Not a good route by Reed. Reed is drifting downfield on the arrow route. He should run his course there. That's just poor execution. Could have been a better throw. and Could have been a much better route by the fullback, Mike Reed. Nick Lentz from 29 yards out for the tie. He got it. And with one minute and 20 seconds to go before intermission, Washington has tied it up with Oregon State at 10. But again, I thought you made a great call when you said, I don't understand why they wasted it down, stopping the clock with 136 left in the uh, first half. Yeah, and you don't want to beat a dead horse. I mean, that's that's dead and gone, and and uh, Washington a good job of. Oh, wait a second, we've got a penalty. We're trying to sort things out down on the playing field. The referee here. Let's see what he has to say. But you know, getting back to that, Steve. If you've got a first down situation, you've just picked up a first down, the referee isn't going to wind the clock until your offensive group is set. So why, why throw the ball to the ground there? Why not run a passing play? And as a result, you have one less opportunity to pick up the first down, and you end up trying a field goal. Now, the field goal was successful. You pick up three points. All of a sudden, you get a penalty, and now you got to make the field goal again. From 34 yards out. This crowd will go crazy if he misses it. But Nick Lentz pushes it through. And again, we are tied at 10 with Washington, the number seven team in the nation, and Oregon State. And what we're seeing is a team Washington that wants to show the country hey we are a national championship contender and Oregon State just have trying to prove that they're a football contender and Lentz showing some great concentration you have three taken off the board you line right back up and you drill it again and a reaction there from Lentz yeah I can hit that one twice and I can hit the second one from five yards deeper on the field Riley has to be very thrilled with an opportunity to go in at at the words tied 10 10 here into the locker room and just to clarify for the viewers that first field goal try was nullified because of an illegal procedure call Lentz says hey it doesn't matter This has been a heck 
of a football game here in the first half. The Beavers are up to the test, and I think the Huskies understand they're in for a dogfight in the second half. Lentz, short kick, go, Greg. taken by Ainsworth at the five. Greg pushes his way out near the 25, and the clock winds down to 110 remaining. We've got a great Pac-10 conference matchup coming your way next Saturday at 6.30 Eastern on these same stations. We will be in Stanford, California as the number 13 UCLA Bruins face the Stanford Cardinal. The conference race is reaching the critical stage and UCLA and Stanford are both in the running for a bowl bid. That's next Saturday, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 West Coast, Pac-10 conference football. UCLA victorious today over California. Stanford has two weeks to prepare for that game as they were off this Saturday. Alexander trying to dump it off, and it was batted down by Washington's Jabari Issa. This is called the danger zone. A little over a minute to go in the first half. The pressure by Tuiaea up the middle. And Issa almost brings this ball in. What a disaster that would be for Oregon State. And I think you'll see the Beavers, Steve. We get a look at Issa. Some big years ahead of him, young sophomore. But I think you'll see Oregon State keep the ball on the ground on these next two plays. Washington still has a timeout left. But I think you need to work the clock and get into the locker room. And Oregon State also will have the kickoff to start the second half. Alexander taking a big loss here. But the clock will keep winding down inside one minute to play, and it'll be third down and very, very long. Oregon State only 37 yards rushing in this first half. And that's what Oregon State decided to do. Keep the ball on the ground. Make sure that Alexander understands he needs to secure the football. And on the scoreboard here at Corvallis still indicates that Washington has a timeout, but they've used all their timeouts. It's a smart play by head coach Mike Riley from Oregon State. Take your kids into the locker room with a 10-10 tie. Don't waste the confidence and the momentum that you've created over the first 30 minutes of football. They'll run it again. And that will be the final play of the first half. And it has been a wonderfully played first half by Oregon State. The number 17, 17 in the nation. The Washington Huskies have been taken to the limit to the first 30 minutes here at Parker Stadium in Corvallis. It's the Huskies 10, the Oregon State Beavers 10, but Mike Riley knows they've got 30 minutes to go, and they were not strong in the second half last week. We are just moments away from the second half kickoff between Washington and Oregon State. Right now, let's go down in the field and Larry Burnett and Jim Lambright. All right. All right, here with Coach Lambright, what'd you tell you guys at halftime? Well, we're ahead in all the stats, so we're just making too many mistakes, killing ourselves. It's a matter of capitalizing. It, it seems like the offense is starting to click, and every time it does, something happens to shut it down. Uh, that's been the case. We've given them just great field position, and, and you can't do that. You cannot keep an underdog in the game. Can you make some changes in the second half? I uh, sure can. All right, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Lou. Coach Lambright wants to get it going in the second half. He's number seven in the country, but he's tied 10-10 with the Beavers. Let's go back upstairs. And he needs that man to heat up as well. Brock Hewitt, who had a good first half, did have a critical interception of that pass when he went deep into the end zone. But 11 of 18 through the air for 92 yards. Hewitt was really victimized by a big drop by Fred Coleman. You remember in the first quarter, Hewitt had Coleman down the field on a streak. Ball was slightly underthrown, but easily a catchable ball. And Fred Coleman just flat out dropped the football. Lentz will kick off to Ainsworth, number one, on the left side, and Armin Hatcher on the right. It is a short kick. Jason Dandridge will take it at the 22, and Dandridge is past the 30-yard line. In the first half, statistically, Washington obviously won the ground battle 115 yards to 33, but two turnovers by the Huskies allowed Oregon State to stay in it. Yeah, it really was the two turnovers that made the difference in the first half, and Jim Lambright coming out of the locker room talked about field position. The turnovers gave Oregon State great field position in the first half. They have doubled the yardage. Here we go. 
And the Bees have to hold on to that enthusiasm here in the second half, and they need their offense to step up. That means Tim Alexander must get things going. Ricky Walker goes in motion. He'll be in single coverage. Alexander scrambling left. Cut down. A loss in the play of a good three, four yards. Beavers' first half possession. They started with a punt, then got that field goal. That touchdown came on that 11-play drive. And a punt, and then the half ended. That really illustrates the problems the Oregon State Beavers had against this eight-man defensive front in the first half. Really only one sustained drive to speak of. Unfortunately for Tim Alexander and his offensive unit, they came up with a score on that drive. Second and 13. Alexander this time with time firing, completes the pass up near the 35-yard line, but well shy of a first down. It'll be third down in a likely passing situation. Joe Kuykendall is back in the game, though, at tight end. Dangerous ball to the outside. Tim Alexander waiting to just a last split second to deliver this ball. Mac Tuiaia bringing Alexander down to the turf somewhat roughly. Look at the third down conversions. Oregon State not very efficient. Third and six. Throw underneath, and this fullback has really made some big plays in this game. And it is John Olazetich. He and Mike Jaycott have made so many big third down plays for Oregon State. And this is not only a great play by Lazetich, but Tim Alexander drawing the rush into the pocket and then doing a great job of letting the ball go, turning the aggressiveness of the Washington defense back against him. First, a great catch by Lazatich, and then the broken tackle. That's Tony Parrish. That's a first team. And flags as the ball is snapped from Aaron Cook to Tim Alexander. And Alexander drew the Washington Huskies offside. It's going to be first and five. And going back to the first down play, Lazatich broke a tackle on a first team all pack 10 guy at free safety. That's Tony Parrish. Third ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That is the sixth penalty against Oregon State. There is Heikendahl who's back in. You might remember his first half injury to his right leg. And they said he would be back for the second half, and here he is. Now he'll leave the game as they'll go with more wide receivers. I stand corrected. I thought that the Huskies had been drawn offside with some early movement by Kuykendall. Not the type of mistake you'd expect, as you said, Steve, from a senior tight end. First down, 15 yards to go. Alexander throwing it to Tompkins. Very short game, maybe of two yards. And it'll be second down and very long, about 13 yards to go as the tackle is made by Jerry Jensen. Very apparent to open up the second half how the Huskies defensive unit under Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator, they're tightening down the screws. They're bringing some more pressure with the eight-man front. The coverage of the cornerbacks on the outside tightening up a bit, not as much cushion on the outside. Oregon State and Tim Alexander, they're going to have to hit some plays down the field in the passing game to loosen up this Husky defensive front. Alexander throws it to his fullback, John Olazetich, who can't hold on, but it would have been a gain of like four yards in the play and would have resulted in a third and nine, so they'll try it again now. Third down, 14 yards to go. You got to have teamwork from all over the football players, the band, the fans. Right now, Oregon State's got it all together. But these guys in the band have to convert third downs as well. And the music's <laughs> down to its last, and Oregon State is facing a third and long. He were warming up the wing on the sideline there. And Prescott trying to go deep. They're throwing that way. Prescott's out there. Can't hold. 23. Let's go down in the field and Larry. Well, despite that nice pass from Taylor Alexander, as David was saying, if 
OSU needs to open up the passing game to get things going. They may have to switch to Tyler Thomas, and he is warming up here on the OSU sideline, so we may see him next possession. Now, no need to go to Thomas after that throw by Alexander. And even though it appeared to be a tough catch on the outside for Prescott, those are the types of plays you have to make when you're a 24-point underdog and you're going up against the number seven team in the country. Prescott has to make that play, and you saw Mike Riley, the head coach on the sideline, run over and, and, and talk to Prescott about it. So now Mike Bessler comes on on fourth and 14. And timeout is called. I mean, it, we saw some unusual timeout calls in the first half. Delay of game. Delay of game. On the offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Was Washington showing them an odd front the way they were going to rush the uh, punter? Well, even if you're seeing an odd front, you have to call timeout before that 25 second clock expires. And Mike Riley, really upset on the sidelines. He's not showing his emotion, but the, the penalty on Kuykendall to force the first and 15 situation, and then a problem here setting up for the punt gives Washington much better possibility of picking up good field position. Well, I wouldn't have called the timeout. I would have taken the penalty, and they do that. And here's Payton trying to get outside, and he will. Payton gets to about the 45-yard line. An excellent return. Looked like he was going to try the middle. Nothing was there, so he broke outside. 11:51 remaining third quarter. Washington has the football for the first time. A 10-10 ball game with Washington and Oregon State. Brock Heward comes back in the field. His first possession of the second half. From the 39-yard line. Rashawn Sheehy trying to get outside, gains a yard, maybe two to the 41, second down and eight. Nathan McAtee on the tackle. Here's the Husky first half possessions. They went 42 yards in 10 plays, missed on fourth and one, then they punted twice. They went 77 yards, had a controversial touchdown we, where we thought Rashawn Sheehy fumbled the football at the goal line, then the interception, then the field goal. Brock Heward wants more. He has led an offense that has averaged 34 points per game this year. They've been held to 10 in the first half. Heward deep, wide open, Payton, first down at the 31 yard line. I know we have said it throughout the season at last David but he throws as pretty a fade pass as any quarterback in the country. And this is actually a corner route the move to the post and then outside and Terrence Carroll the free safety just gave up on this one. Watch the touch. Just lay it out and give Payton the opportunity to run under the football but you see number 44 there Terrence Carroll he gave up on the play. You got a chase from behind on that play. So now first down from the 31. Sheehy tries to get outside, but wow, that Oregon State defense just stretched him out. They have made sure he pushes it in. And isn't that that gap control that Greg Newhouse can, talks about, the defensive coordinator? The head coach Mike Riley and Greg Newhouse coming down from the Canadian Football League. And remember Mike Riley run, won a couple Grey Cups when he was with Winnipeg in the Canadian Football League. There's the defensive coordinator, Greg Newhouse. They have smaller players. What they want to do is they want to come up and they want to take care of gaps and force the ball carrier to run sideways towards the sidelines. Don't allow him to get north-south type movement. And they've done a pretty good job this afternoon. Second down and nine. Catch made. Payton, boy, he goes right back to him. When he needs big plays, it is Payton. Washington has a bit of an unusual passing game in that they use the three-step drop so much. And you got Brock Heward sitting in there. He's 6'5", 220 pounds. He's got Payton on the outside, as you see. And he can just take that three-step drop with a big offensive line, get the ball off, and it's so frustrating for a defensive team because it's so tough to get to Heward in the pocket. The drop is so quick, and the ball is out of there right now. Third and one. Sheehy's got the first down. He's down the right sideline. It'll be first. 
first and goal for the Huskies. That time Oregon State tried to stretch it out, but man, the offensive line just blew holes in that defense. The Rashawn Sheehy lining up in the single back set and the quickness to the outside. He sets the move up to the inside and then the speed to turn the corner. Boy, he was just a step from turning the corner completely and walking into the end zone. Four straight 100 yard games. 111 today after 15 carries for 136 last week against Arizona. Sean gets it again, and he is to the two-yard line. That time, a huge hole opened up by Prutz and by Benji Olson. And once again, the vision. This play is designed to go to the outside. Watch him feel the crease inside. And then he keeps his feet fighting for every yard he can get. He was trying to run off tackle, but he feels the seam come open. And just a quick burst of energy up inside. The Huskies second and goal inside the five yard line. Double tight end, H back to the right. Hana Sheehy. Rashawn gets it. He will score his second touchdown. When Coach Lambright came out and talked to Larry Burnett to start the second half, he said, yeah, we'll make some changes. They made some changes all right. They lined up in two tight end set, and they banged the ball at Oregon State on that drive. Cameron Cleland with a nice block on the outside, actually a beautiful block, and then Rashawn Sheehy one-on-one. -on -one. No way you're going to stop him in the open field down near the goal line. Lentz for the seven-point lead. And Washington is up 17 to 10 as Rashad Sheehy on his 22nd carry of the day. Now with 120 yards. This is his second score to give the Huskies a seven point lead. Those Huskies want to go to the Rose Bowl. They've got a great opportunity as they started this game with a record of five and one. They have taken a seven point lead on Oregon State. That gives me a headache. Oh, man. Uh, Nick Lentz will kick off. 140 yards rushing for Washington. 120 of that by Rashawn Sheehy. Rest by Maurice Shaw. Only 30 yards rushing for Oregon State. And there are the return men, Ainsworth. He is the speedster, number one. Just old fashioned Husky football. Power football lineup. Run it between the tackles. Hatcher from the five. To the 21. Ooh, a little extracurricular activity. Right now, let's take a look at today's academic All-American profile. It's brought to you by GTE, the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA. Today, we look at Nathan McAtee, who has a 3.81 GPA in exercise and sports science, two-time first-team All-Pac-10 academic team, and he is the middle linebacker for Oregon State. There he is, the 6'4 senior from Bellevue, Washington, who uh, left Huskyville came down to play for the Babers. Steve, this is a very critical drive for Oregon State. The Oregon State defense has been on the field a long time. Tim Alexander and his troops need to give the defense a rest. Boy, and Jensen is after Alexander, almost cut him down. He still has time to complete the pass, but I believe he was out of bounds. Yes, it'll be second and 10. Boy, Jensen came from that corner, I mean, like, shot out of a gun. Now Alexander's going to get pressure from the backside. Look at Jensen. Hot breath down his neck. The flying attempt to bring down Tim Alexander. And Tim Alexander throws the ball beautifully down the field. No. Out of bounds. Did not get a foot down. That left foot came down on the sideline. And some indecision once again by the officiating crew. The field judge very late making the call. But it was the correct call. Alexander on the option. Rookie tries to get outside, but Walker will gain only two to the 22-yard line. Hey, Washington, 
they're coming to play second half. Their defense has been phenomenal. There's Lester Towns, the inside linebacker who was all over the field first half. You talk about the two linebackers that left after last year graduating, Viala, Inkaliaga. They've been replaced by two guys that probably have better speed and athletic ability. And Lester Towns, number 17, gives you the gift on defense of the pursuit from sideline to sideline. Wonderful play by Towns on that option. Jensen's blitzing, so is Cholak. The throw is made, and it's incomplete. It will be three and out for Oregon State. You know, that's the style that I think Randy Hart was looking for. He has a theme this year that is called picks and sticks, meaning he wants the interception, and if you don't get it, he wants you to really stick whoever has the football. In this case, it's either Alexander or the receiver. And here's Fessler to punt it away again. They came a sticking in the second half. Payton, forget it. Jerome had nowhere to go. Well, Steve, and Tim Alexander very slowly walks to the sideline. We might see Tyler Tomich. After Washington takes a seven-point lead, that's not the time to go three and out. Giving the ball right back to Heward, Kathon, and Sheehy, and that big, talented offensive line led up front by Olsen and Cruz. And it was the big, huge offensive line of UCLA that wore down Oregon State in the second half last week. This Remember, this line was 6'6", 300 average. Sheehy. It's about seven, eight yards a crack. This is a very critical time in the football game for Mike Riley and the Oregon State Beavers. Washington starting to really exert, ex start to exert their dominance along that offensive front. And this defense for the Beavers is wearing down. These guys have been going hard, but they have not had the benefit of any long, sustained drives except for one from their offense. Second and three. Sheehy, big hole, first down. Inside Oregon State territory to the 47-yard line. He has over 130 yards rushing now. Oregon State, they're lining up in an eight-man defensive front as well. They're trying to use numbers to stop the run. But the Washington Huskies up front just moving people. Look at the push along the offensive front, and then the nice running ability by Sheehy, breaking a couple tackles. Oregon State's going to have to stiffen, or, or, or else this game could get out of hand here in the third quarter. The track star, Jawar, and Hooker is in, but instead they go to Sheehy. He runs into Fred Coleman, but still gets the first down. A gain of about 11 yards. He now has 147 yards rushing, David, and over 800 on the season. Rashawn Sheehy, remember last year, Corey Dillon took over for him. Sheehy was a, on everybody's first team all Pac-10 list coming into the 96 season, and he basically had to sit the year out. And in 97, he came into the year as a much hungrier runner as, as a result. He had 147 yards on 25 carries already. Give it to him again. Oh, this time it is read beautifully and a three-yard loss. Brian Rogers, the outside linebacker. Offense resting, getting a chance, but my goodness, they were on the sideline a good 10 more minutes in Washington in the first half. The Oregon State defense undersized. They go with quickness and speed. And occasionally, even if you're a big, talented offensive line, you miss an assignment. Don't miss an assignment on Brian Rogers. That guy can bring it. He can bring the helmet. And believe me, she, he felt that hit in the backfield. Seventh tackle for a loss this year. Coleman goes in motion on second down. They run play action. Here at all kinds of time. He'll get the first down, and Fred Coleman is to the 14-yard line. One of the benefits of having such a great running game is when you set up in first and second 
first and second down situations throwing the football, there's nobody in the pocket. Heward had all the time in the world. And don't get me wrong, that's a beautiful throw and a very nice route by Coleman, but Heward's just sitting back there counting the house. Washington trying to get in the house right now, and Brock Heward keeping it as flags go flying. It was first and 10 from near the 13-yard line. You know, Stephen, let's talk about the Washington offensive scheme. They line Dead up with ball. two tight ends. Ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Five-yard penalty against Washington, early movement. Can't be happy about that if you're Jim Lambright. But this Washington offensive line oftentimes sets up two tight ends, a lot of three-step drops by Heward in the pocket, and a great running game. So when you spring the pass on a defense in a first down situation or a second down situation, oftentimes Heward is going to have no pressure. And that's a big part of the formula and, and a big part of the reason why he came into this game with 14 touchdown passes and only one interception. He has had one pick in this game. It was on a pass to the end zone. Here he'll go back to the air, fading to paper, and it's a touchdown. There is a flag down, though. That's an offside call against Oregon State. This touchdown is going to stand. David, I don't know if you have noticed it, but we've had those tight shots of Brock Heward. You look into his eyes, and he's a different quarterback. I'm not sure if he got together with Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator in the locker room, there and they had some serious discussions. Play. Offsides on the defense. Penalty is declined. Holding on the defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. But Heward clearly much more poised than he was first half. There you see Oregon State in the neutral zone. A nice job using his cadence. And Heward, we talked about his gift of throwing the fade ball. Beautiful fade ball for six there to Payton. Easy play for Payton in the end zone. That was gift wrap. So Lentz comes on, and Washington will try and push their lead to 24-10. And Lentz does just that. And Washington has their biggest advantage of the game, two touchdowns over Oregon State. Brock Heward is on fire. There is a beautiful little Husky fan. She may have had tears rolling down her cheeks in the first half, but she is smiling a plenty as Washington State has outscored Oregon State 14 nothing to open the third quarter. Six plays, 63 yards. Payton with his eighth catch of the game. He has 106 yards and an 18-yard touchdown. And the game of football is all about what you do in the trenches. And undoubtedly, in the second half, Washington came out, probably had a stern talking to delivered to them by Lambright at halftime. And they have dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. It has been the difference. And this game starting to slip away from the Beavers. Heward, a perfect four for four, second half, 450 yards. Hatcher looking for an opening. Oh, he's busted. Big time by Washington. There is a flag down in the field, but Daryl Daniels really delivered a hit to Armin Hatcher. Look at the emotion on the sideline for the Huskies. They've always been a team that plays with great emotion. Typically at home, they feed on that up in Seattle, that 77,000. Illegal block in the back on the return team. The Huskies typically feed on that at home at that 77,000 seat stadium, Husky Stadium. Watch the hit by Daniels. Hatcher carrying the ball a little bit loosely, and he gets taken on high. Oh I mean, right up about shoulder level. And Oregon State's going to get hit with a blocking infraction here. Not what you want to do. I mean, you're down 14 points, a little over five minutes to go in the third quarter, and now you're starting your drive underneath the shadows of your own goalpost. Washington so impressive in this second half. And, I mean, the entire state of Washington has to be excited. They're two schools. The Cougars and the Huskies are a combined but 7 and 0 for Washington State. 5 and 1, 12 and 1. And for the first time in the history of the Associated Press Bowl, two Washington schools 
are in the top ten. Washington number seven, Washington State number ten. They beat Arizona today in overtime. And that ball is incomplete. Tony Parrish thought he had the interception, but they say he juggled it as he went out of bounds. Well, Alexander remains in the game. They're not going to Tyler Thomas, even though down 10. And Alexander taking a shot down the field, and if you watch Parrish, he's going to keep his feet in bounds, but he's not going to have control. Freeze it right here. Now watch the feet. He's going to keep the feet in bounds, but he doesn't have control, according to the field judge. The ball slipping out of his hands. He didn't have control. In bounds. Oregon State runs the ball up to the 14-yard line. It will be third down, about five, six yards to go as Jason Dandridge gets the carry. He's the junior from Moreno Valley, California. And this is the type of situation the Huskies love on defense. They get you down by a couple touchdowns and not much danger. They can give up a big play on the outside. They'll still have their lead. That's when they start bringing everybody. They bring that pressure, Burton number eight, He's been a, involved in a lot of blitzing over the course of the season for the Huskies out of that rover back position. Big third down for Alexander. Alexander trying to go to the fullback, and boy, they have read that play. Randy Hart was hurt by it in the first half. Obviously made some changes. Jim Lambright told Larry Burnett uh, as they came out for the third quarter, we've made some changes. That might be one of them. That was one of the changes they made coming out of the locker room, and it's beginning to be a broken record. Three and out. Three and out. Three and out. And if you can't move the ball offensively against a team like Washington, it's just a tailor-made situation for a three, four, five touchdown blowout in the second half. That's the type of threat they pose on offense if you keep giving them the football in good field position. Fessler, Fred Coleman is back. They had Payton in earlier. Now they've got Fred in the game. And that ball will roll inside the 35-yard line. Fessler will wind up with one of his best punts of the year as he hammers it all the way to the 30-yard line. Let's go down to Larry. Well, guys, this sideline here at Oregon State, which was jumping with excitement in the first half, has gotten very, very quiet here in the second half. They've had their problems in the second half, but that happens with young teams. You would expect the more established, the more mature program, which would be Washington, to really take charge here. An important time for Oregon State and the program to see if they can get back in this game, make some things happen, and finish out strongly for the rest of this second half. But they're a young team. It's going to be tough. Oregon State has really picked it up this year. They came into this game with a record of three and three. Hewitt's going to go right back to the ground and they hammer out a good four yards to the 34 yard line. As again it is Rashawn Sheehy who has now gone over 150 yards rushing in the game. Hewitt a perfect four for four in the second half with that last touchdown pass to Jerome Payton. Oregon State is not only a young team but they're a small team. And they played a lot this afternoon. They're contributing eight men to the line of scrimmage to try to stop this running game, but Sheehy's not getting hit until he's three, four, five yards downfield. Play action. They're going to dump it off to Payton, who has his ninth catch of the game, tries to dive forward for the first down. The mark will be important. I believe it will be about just inches shy of a first down. But for Jerome Payton, that is a career best nine catches in one game. And Damon Heward makes these throws out in the flat look so easy. He gets pressure from Brechterfield. But look at the ball placement. A front pocket catch there, perfectly delivered. That's tough to defense. I know you did not mean to say Damon Heward. That was his brother. He wears number seven in honor of Damon and then there's another Heward coming up Luke who is six and zero at Puyallup High School playing for his dad Mike and Luke's team won 52 to nothing last night at Puyallup so they're seven and oh you got all the information Yeah, the big difference and I should know the big difference between Brock and Damon Brock's the lefty and Damon the right hander and of course Damon the all time leading passer in Washington history 
And now he is what with the Miami Dolphins. The third team quarterback. Playing on Sundays. And you know, Brock for a little while was was wondering whether he should go to Washington. Damon experienced some difficulty, got booed a little bit up at Husky Stadium in his junior and senior year, but clearly a good decision for Brock to go to school in Washington. He's really thriving in this system. Third and inches. Oh, nobody's there. Hewitt's going to get it anyway as there is a huge hole between left guard and tackle. Hewitt on the broken play. Six foot five, 220 pounds. When you're a quarterback, you're coached. If you miss the handoff, regardless of whether it's your fault or the running back's fault, get the ball back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Try to save the day, and that's exactly what Heward did. Nice play. And Husky fans have to be happy, not only with Heward's accuracy and his arm strength, but his great decision-making ability. He turned a negative play into a first down there. And the Husky drive stays alive. Brock Hewer, just a red shirt sophomore. He is such a focused kid. I mean, he's a guy who has a 3-5 GPA in pre-med. He gives it to Sheehy. Big hole with Sean. He is through. Skipping left. First down to the 46-yard line. Over 160 yards rushing now for the number one runner at Washington. Talking about how he was beaten out by Corey Dillon last year, and he had a chance to maybe hang his head. Well, apparently, he was so impressive, particularly in spring and offseason workouts, that his teammates named him captain, and he was honored by that. Now, she was not only honored, he was surprised. He said, Hey, I, I barely even played last year, but it said a lot about the way his teammates felt about him. And I, as he said, Steve, a big injection of confidence coming into the season. Well, he's got it going now. He's just ripping off chunks of yardage, and you can see his vision as he approached the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was going to go over tackle, then snuck back inside and gained four. And some of these running plays, it's not Sheehy getting it done for Washington. It's a big offensive line. They're getting great push up front. Sheehy's not facing contact until he gets downfield four or five yards. That makes it pretty easy on your tailback. Nice job by Washington up front. That big bruising offensive line. Jason Harris comes in at tailback now, and Brock Heward will take time Not out. Washington, their first. The, the uh, half. game clock was down to three, or the uh, 25 second clock was down to three seconds. So Brock Heward takes a timeout with Washington leading 24 to 10. In our next game that you'll be able to watch of Pac-10 Conference football will be the UCLA Bruins who beat California today against the Stanford Cardinal. And Stanford has had, will will have two weeks off for that game. Should be a great contest at Stanford. The Bruins still in the Rose Bowl hunt. Very much so. And a lot of people pointing to the game number 10, week 10 of the college season, UCLA hosting Washington down at the Rose Bowl. But first, the Bruins have to take care of business, and that is going to be a very tough game to win up in Palo Alto. David, weren't you telling me that the last time Oregon State beat Washington was in 85 when the Bruins went to the Rose Bowl, and it was an unbelievable upset. You think one of the greatest upsets in the history of Pac-10 football. Well, that was the year that I started at quarterback for UCLA, the only year, by the way, but 1985. And Washington was leading the Pac-10 conference at that time. The Huskies were 36-point favorites against Oregon State up in Seattle. And the Beavers knocked them off 21-20. Last time, by the way, that Oregon State beat this Washington club. This is Jason Harris skipping to the outside. Harris with sprinter speed is out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Boy, they've got a host of running backs. They've got Sheehy, they've got Mike Reed, they've got Marie Shaw. This is their fourth team running back. If you watch the blocking up front, Cameron Cleland could have made this run. I mean, there's nobody in sight for Oregon State. And uh, I want to give Harris some credit because he is a speedy guy and he made a nice cut on that run. But the point is this, Washington is flexing its muscles up front and there's not a lot 
Oregon State can do about it. There's Sheehy, and he's been the beneficiary of that physical game up front by Olsen and Krutz and company. Yes, they also have another running back by the name of Adam Tate, who has Corey Dillon like size, but is having those clearinghouse problems. I have them too. I keep getting these mails from the publisher's clearinghouse, and I haven't received one cent yet. Meantime, I've spent all the money. I can't believe you even made it out of the clearinghouse. Dude. <laughs> There's the run by Harris. Nice inside move down to the seven yard line. Second down, about five yards to go. Also winning today. We told you about UCLA's win over California. But what a win for Washington State and for Mike Price. 35 34 must win game. You're home in Pullman. You can't let those get away, and they did not. Wow. Dick Tomey down in Arizona. He sure likes going for two in those overtime situations. You remember the game against Cal last year? I believe that was either a three or four overtime type game. And Arizona went for two and that one failed and Cal came up with the victory a year ago. On second down Harris huge hole for the touchdown. There is a flag down well after well, it's actually near the line of scrimmage. So let's see. But you're absolutely right. Upsides on the defense that penalty is declined. Touchdown. It is a touchdown but the Washington offensive line is showing you why they are one of the very best in the college game. Well, it's made all the difference in the world, and it's not tough to figure out. 402 yards of total offense for Washington, and we're still in the third quarter. And Harris isn't going to let that football go. And it's his first score of the year. Put it on the mantle. Team new. Get it autographed by your teammates. Lentz point after is good. And Washington, after being tied 10 10 with Oregon State, has scored 21 straight in the second half. It is 31 to 10, Huskies. Just a straight blast play off the right side, and Harris basically isn't even touched. Three carries, 37 yards on that drive for Harris. And a big run down the left sideline, and time to party for the Husky faithful. The time to party for Jason Harris as he'll watch his defense try and heat up that Oregon State offense that they have done so successfully in the second half. Just four seconds remain in the third quarter. Good job by Washington. Last game they blew out Arizona 58 to 28. 58 points the most by a Pac-10 team against and Arizona defense and that's a very good Arizona defense. And this reminds me a lot of the UCLA Oregon State game last week. UCLA was very confused. A highly rated quarterback Cade McNown out of rhythm in the first half. Same case this afternoon with Washington. Heward had some problems. Even though he had fairly good numbers he was a little bit off rhythm. Washington easily could have trailed this ball game at halftime. Remember she he really was even in the end zone on their first score. He fumbled before he crossed the plane. Mike Riley had some great opportunities in the first half just like last week at the Rose Bowl. The Beavers weren't able to space themselves from their competition and as a result the physical factor has really taken over the second half. Husky dominance. 31 to 10. 21 points in the third quarter. And the kickoff by Lentz. Short. Ainsworth at the 10. He is to the 24, and that is all. For Washington, they're only lost this year 27 to 14 when they had an early frost. Scott Frost. And that has been all. Steve Fiziak, David Norrie, Larry Burnett with you at Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon, where the Beavers made it a test early. Tied at 10 at half, but Washington with 21 straight points now starts the fourth quarter. 
It'll be Oregon State's football at their own 25 yard line following that kickoff. Alexander remains the quarterback. He'll run the play action. He's got a wide open field to his right, and he is past the 40 yard line. And that is what Mike Riley has been looking for all game long to get number 10 outside. Well, she, he has been spectacular. Hathon with a touchdown. Harris with a touchdown run. Rashad with 167 yards. Hathon's got a career in a high nine catches. Defensive lineman Bob McCain broke his collarbone, likely gone for the year, but look at the third quarter yards. Wow. It's brought to you by Henry Weinhardt's our game summary. How about Alexander on that last play? He can sure make you look ugly out in the open field. <laughs> and they are rattled right at the line of scrimmage by Suki Wiggs. Middle linebackers Marcus Hairston and Lester Towns. Not much running room for Ricky Walker, who is their redshirt freshman from East Bay. And there is Marcus Tuyasasopo, who came in and threw for 270 yards against Nebraska in their loss this year. But here's a kid who is a true freshman, who just, they say he has been absolutely cool. 270 yards, two touchdowns against Nebraska. It's pretty good defense. Alexander throwing it to Roddy Tompkins who had 10 catches last week but he's had only one in this game and just for four yards and Alexander has to make that play I mean that's that's setting a screen up to the outside Tompkins wide open and when you play against an eight man defensive front you have to make plays in the passing game and you got the aggressive corners on the outside Miller and Smith Butler has come in for Smith by the way at cornerback for Washington but they dare you to throw the ball on the outside and if you can't hit plays in the passing game you cannot have success against this pressure defense of Washington and Oregon State has not just two for 12 converting third downs Chorak comes a rush and they double team him and it is intercepted Tony Parrish slips and falls to the 45 yard line but he has his first pick it is the secondary's seventh this year. And for Washington they said picks and sticks we've seen all of that in the second half. This might be the last play we see Tim Alexander he's trying to hit a crossing route and he overthrows this ball by three or four yards. I mean that's a fair catch situation on an interception easy play for Tony Parrish. Mike Riley can't be too happy. I mean he can't be happy at all and I think we're going to see Tyler Tomich play quarterback on the next possession for Oregon State. You have to be efficient in the passing game to attack that Washington defense. Coleman goes in motion. Hewitt right to the air. Looking deep. Incomplete. Payton well covered by Andre Holland. Washington looking for a knockout punch on first down play action. Good pressure in the pocket by the Oregon State defense forced Hewitt to put that ball up early. I love that call though. I always do when the defense comes on quickly and they might be thinking and have their heads down being down 21. Hey, the best passing offenses in football whether it's at the college level or the NFL level love to throw the ball on first and second down because it's an obvious run situation. Steve Spurrier the Green Bay Packers the San Francisco 49ers and the Washington Huskies. Here's Jason Harris escaping to the outside. Harris scored on his last carry and now takes it for a good seven eight yards. And that's an obvious run situation there for Washington. Everybody in the ballpark knows that after Washington tries a fade down the sideline and first down they're going to go right back to the running game. It's been so successful for them in the second half. The give to Harris and still Oregon State gives up a big chunk of yard nine yards on that second down play. Third and inches. Slam ahead to Pat Connor, who is a true freshman from Woodenville High School. And Pat Connor, he played with Marcus Tuiasasopo at Woodenville High School. There's Pat. I talked to running back coach Wayne Moses yesterday. 
we talked about the true freshman Conniff. He said, when we line up in the eye in short yardage situation, we're going to run the fullback. Kelron Sykes is the injured Beaver down in the field. He's the junior from Los Angeles Linwood High School. Here's some scores from around college football. Nebraska spanking Kansas. They're the number one team in the nation, 21 0 in the third. And it is Florida State by 23. I thought that was going to be a good game with Florida State really running away with it in the third. Michigan, that old battle. Michigan State's quarterback had some problems. How about that defense? The Wolverines haven't given up a touchdown in the fourth quarter all year long. Ohio State, they still think they've got a chance to play a Pac-10 school in the Rose Bowl. Auburn beats Arkansas 26-14. There is the upset. Mizzou in two overtimes. Unbelievable. They were up 30 to 7. Saw Oklahoma State come back. Jason Harris will be taken down and he'll lose about three in the play. There's also a flag down. And in the Pac-10, how about that game with the Cougars beating Arizona 35-34 in overtime, and Washington State is 7-0. UCLA, big on California, 35-17. We will see the Bruins next week at Stanford. On the play, there were two fouls. Offsides on the defense. Holding on the offense, those penalties offset, replay the down. And Nathan McAtee, the middle linebacker, is the young man they're taking off the field, the senior from Bellevue, Washington, who is our all academic star. He's a guy with a 3 5 GPA. Mike Riley gives him a pat on the back. You talk about a heroic effort. These defenders for Oregon State sitting in against a one well, of the best offensive lines in the country going toe to toe with them for an entire football game not getting a lot of help from the offense a lot of three and outs Oregon State only has two first downs in the second half Jonathan Jackson takes over for McEntee at middle linebacker he's in a cover responsibility Hewer going for another home run wide open it's Hunter for the touchdown There is a flag down, but boy, we saw the sprinter speed of Jawan Hooker and Brock Huard. He realizes the penalty will go against Oregon State, so he wants to meet the man with the 427 speed in the 40 yard dash. Meet him head on to give him a congratulations. And Washington State High School track and field, the top eight times in the 100 meters in history all belong to Jawar and Hooker. 10.27 speed, world class type speed on the outside, and once again a perfectly thrown deep ball by Hewitt. And he is one of eight Huskies who will also compete on the track team. That's the kind of speed that Jim Lambright has. And they are running away from Oregon State. It is 38 to 10. And Jawarn Hooker taking that pass from Brock Hewer, who it is tossing his 16th touchdown of the year. Steve Fiziak, David Norrie, we welcome you back with Larry Burnett on the sideline to Parker Stadium in Corvallis, where well, the Beavers feel they are out of it now. Down 28 with 12 23 to go in this football game in Washington with a powerful defense behind them. Nick Lentz will kick off. To about the goal line, Hatcher bringing it back, and he is smothered at the 16. And Tyler Thomas will be coming in as the new Beaver quarterback. Tyler Thomas, who is the junior from Long Beach, California, played last year at Long Beach City College, where he threw for better than 2,600 yards and 20 touchdowns. Thomas got a big taste of duty last week down at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. See, 25 for 57 over the course of the year. Last week, Oregon State put the ball up 64 times against UCLA. And here comes Jason Chorak. He hits him, but well after the play. 
And it is Mike Jaycott with the catch. For about a seven eight yard gain. There's the story for Tim Alexander today. Not good numbers. And Alexander made some nice throws on the shorter routes the routes over the middle and the short to intermediate zones but he did not stretch the eight man defensive front. He did not challenge the cornerbacks on the outside with the vertical passing game and as a result that Husky defense just comes down on top of you and strangles it. Safety blitz they run the football and they are near a first down they needed to get to the 22 yard line excuse me the 27 yard line for a first down. But with Alexander, I, I go, no, I go back to Bert Emanuel, Curtis Conway. I think they may have been limited in the college game as well because defenses really don't have to play that much zone. They can play strict man coverage because of a guy doesn't have the arm of a Brock Hewitt. He might wind up as a wide receiver in his future. Well, Alexander is such a great threat running the football, but as we said, when you have eight men fronts lining up against you, it's tough to get outside and break containment. As a result, the weakness of his throwing ability was exposed. There's the hit. Washington has it. And the touchdown. Jabari Issa starting for Chris Campbell. Picks up the loose ball and scores the Washington touchdown. Jason Chora came blitzing from the left. And that is a big time hit coming off the left edge. Issa picks up the ball, a gift wrap present for him, and he walks it into the end zone. Chorak, the All American, bringing the wood. Tomich, that's a rude welcome into a football game getting hit like that. David, for a guy who is 6'5, 255 pounds, man, can he run well. I thought they were running a defensive speed option. <laughs> well, you're right. Chorak. Congratulations. You're right. Congratulating Isa, and it was Chorak who forced a fumble on Tyler Tomich. Jabari scores his first college touchdown. The Beavers chopped some wood, built a dam that held Washington to only 10 points in the first half, but the dam broke in the second half, David. Personal foul. 30 on the defense points on in the, the second PAT. half. Well, I say I would say that the roof came caving in here in the second half and Lambright coming out of the locker room when he talked to our Larry Barnett Burnett he said hey we have made some changes and I know what the change was in the locker room Lambright said we're going to line up and we're going to run the ball at these guys and we're going to play some physical football there's Jason Chorak census all American go by goes by the Croatian sensation you talked about his ability to run and that's the one thing you can't Teach a pass rusher speed. Ainsworth from the five. He'll get out to the 17 yard line. Washington has just played perfect football, perfect offense, perfect defense, second half, perfect special teams, and we've got a perfect sideline reporter in Larry Burnett. Than he was last year. Maybe that's because he spent more time in the weight room than he ever did the three years previously, and maybe he spent a little time at his mom's restaurant, The Islander, on Bashan Island. It's about a 20-minute ferry ride from Seattle. They say the pancakes there are bigger than the plates. Jason shows it. And he says that he has never finished the stack of three, that the pancakes are as big as, big as old LP records. <laughs> Huge. Blow up in your stomach. Here's Thomas going deep. Incomplete. Intended for Roddy Tompkins. Remember the hits that Thomas took last week and he was woozy against the Bruins? Took a woozy hit from, uh, or as Ronnie Lott, the old UC, USC Trojan, would say, a woo lick. That's when the crowd goes, woo, after he licked <laughs> Tyler Thomas in the fourth quarter dropped back to pass and Brendan Ian Badejo a big outside linebacker for UCLA really cleaned him up. Thomas kept on getting up. He's shown me a lot of toughness and resolve and he's going to be a good player someday here in Corvallis. Boy they are coming after him. 
They have not gotten anything. Now they're going with some of the backups as Jason Dandridge gets the call to carry. Doesn't get very much, and the defense is there to wrap him up. And when you play against a Washington pressure defense, you better do one of two things well. You better run the football well between the tackles, or you better make plays in the passing game deep down the field. Oregon State has been able to do neither of the two, and that's why they're trailing in this football game big. Last tackle made by T.J. Jackson. Timeout called by Thomas. It comes with 10 minutes and 9 Timeout. seconds left in the ball Oregon game. State. And the Huskies all over Oregon Second State, 45 to 10. Well, this should impress some of the poll. The guys that put together the uh, polls this week, they'll look down, see 45 to 10, but some of them won't know that it was a 10-10 score at the half. When we talked about at the top, the Huskies still have an outside shot to win the national championship. And a lot of people may raise their eyebrows and say, hey, come on, how can you say that? Well, they're ranked number seven. You have five weeks to go. You have conference championship games coming up. The Huskies have a great chance to move up in the standings, not only after this week of play, but over the next four or five weeks. And if they play against an undefeated team like a Penn State or a Michigan on New Year's Day, that gives them a great shot to, to maybe steal a national championship. No question. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Oregon State and the Pac-10 Conference and is intended solely for the non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of Oregon State and the Pac-10 Conference. Washington has won four Pac-10 titles, three Rose Bowls, and one national championship in the 90s alone. Jim Lambright, when he had to take over for Don James, he was given some limitations. Scholarships were taken away. Television appearances were taken away. But they did not lose. They did not lose, and they're piling up the yardage against Oregon State this afternoon after their sixth win in seven games. Thomas almost has it picked up. Yes, he does. Tyler Tomich has come in at quarterback, two possessions, two turnovers. And this isn't the way you take over the quarterback position at Oregon State. That's a lazy ball that he threw there. It didn't put, put much on that throw. The ball's deflected at the line of scrimmage. And watch Johnson. He lays out. Great job of cradling that football before it reaches the turf. Washington takes over once again. And Marcus Triasasopo is the quarterback pitching out Jason Harris. He's to the 15, to the 10, to the 8, and the flag is down. There's Marcus Tuiasasopo, 6'1", 200 pound, two fre true freshman from Woodenville High School. Great quarterback there. His father, Manu, played eight years in the NFL defensive lineman. All-American down at UCLA and uh, first round pick of the Seattle Seahawks back in the late 70s. What a dominant player his father was on the defensive line across the field. You on the run, illegal block in the back, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. You get a look at Tim Alexander, a lot of frustration. Oregon State had their chances in this one. And when you have this style of team, Steve, a team that, that doesn't threaten the defense, doesn't have the ability for the big play down the field, you got to jump on top. You got to get a 7, 10, maybe 14 point lead if you expect to ever have a chance against a team like a Washington or a UCLA, which the Beavers lined up against last week. Jason has a huge hole that is closed up quickly only because of the quickness of Brian Rogers, the outside linebacker, and he holds Harris to a gain of about seven, eight yards. Jason Harris, you see some of the youngsters taking over now. Guys like Matt Fraze. They also have Ben Cadlitz back from an injury. He's wearing number 70, a former starter. Joe Jarsinka is in the game. He is at the bottom of your screen. And 
second and nine. Tuyasha Sopo hands it off, and they just run down Harris from behind. Aaron Wells. Clock will wind down inside of eight and a half minutes when the next play comes off. But Oregon State so proud of their performance in the first half. You know, but they, they are. They are without a win in conference play, but they almost beat Stanford. They almost beat Arizona State, the Pac-10 champions, losing by three to each of those schools. No, they, they put up a great fight against Stanford. Stanford was so lucky to get out of Corvallis alive. Same could be said for Arizona State. But even though Oregon State played well in the first half of this game, they don't have much to be happy about in the second half. I don't think Riley's going to be too impressed when he watches the film on this second half tomorrow. Third and 13. Tuyasa Sopo will be sacked. Back at the 29-yard line. But I will say this. You know they can't be happy. But Washington was just flat out a different team. They came out with such different emotion in the second half. And Oregon State was three and out, three and out. Brock Huer, he had a different focus in that second half when he came out of the locker room. Well, Huer did a good job, and the skill athletes did a good job for Washington in the second half. But really the game was won on the offensive line and the defensive line for the Huskies. Both units really flexed their muscles and dominated throughout the second half of play. Lentz from 44, snap is a high one, line drive kick will not make it. And it remains Washington 45, Oregon State 10 with seven minutes and 21 seconds remaining in this ball game. Here's Nick Lentz, the walk-on kicker from Curtis, Washington. He was an all-state performer at Curtis High School. And Jim Lambright also has a punter, Sean O'Loughlin, who is on scholarship. One of the problems last year was that kicking game. In fact, the last two years, remember that Notre Dame. Uh, it was a 95 where a, a drop punt on that snap. That's right, the Irish picked up a drop punt and ended up scoring late twice in the fourth quarter to beat the Husky. Thomas trying to go deep, but the nearest man to it was uh, Washington Husky Brendan Jones, the free safety. You know, Steve Washington finishing up here uh, three consecutive weeks being on the road, but if you're going to play three teams in the Pac-10 on the road, consecutive weeks you probably want to have the same type of schedule California Arizona and here finishing up against Oregon State it's going to get tough in November Washington has to take on the Trojans next week and, and they get Oregon UCLA and Washington State to finish things off the Apple Cup on November 22nd it was an absolutely brilliant game last year going to overtime and the Huskies pulling away a late win in Pullman, Washington. <laughs> David, you were talking about their remaining schedule, and as you indicated, two tough ones against the Los Angeles schools, Mike Bellotti, Oregon, Washington. That's always a rivalry, and there's the Apple Cup on November 22. Uh, Trojans having a down year, but they will be tough next week. And then how about those last two games? UCLA at the Rose Bowl and Washington State, a team, after their win in overtime today, still undefeated. As the catch made no, broken up in midfield. Intended for Robert Prescott. He thought he had it, but he trapped it. As intended for Robert Prescott, incomplete. And Prescott just running a streak up the right sideline and if you're going to hit that ball, if you're Tyler Tomich, you got to put the ball up earlier. Let's see if he trapped it here. Can't quite pick it up there, but officials all over the scene. Brett Hopkins is the new punter, David. This is his first college punt. Boy, he hit it pretty well. Driving Jarsenko back to his 35. Joe gets outside. There's a flag down. And as the song goes, Jarsenko, he's no rinkadinka. He's got his own fan club in Washington. And I guess that's one of the lyrics to his song. 
Jarzinka was given a scholarship early in October, a walk-on player. Got some action for on the return. First legal action. block in the back, ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Got his first quality action late in the '96 season, and he's one of the crowd favorites up in Seattle. Washington has a 35-point lead on OSU. And we welcome you back to Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon. Washington is gunning for their sixth win this year. There is that other Washington school across the state. The Cougars are winning their seventh game and seven tries this year. They're in first place in the Pac-10 Conference. Julia Sosopo remains the quarterback, gives it to his running back, and Harris doesn't gain much. Let's go down in the field of Larry Burnett. Well, you got to see a little bit of Joe Jarzinka for the Huskies. He's five foot seven, 165 pounds, a walk-on, just got a scholarship this year. He doesn't play a whole lot, but he's got those long golden locks that come out from under his helmet that David Norrie likes so much. And the guy has a fan club. They love him in Husky land. They even have a cheer. They bring signs to the games for Joe Jarzinka. And the cheer goes, Joe Jarzinka, he's no rinky dinka. It's the kind of guy you want to put a do not disturb sign on. <laughs> Don't you love that? Second and ten to Yasasopo. Looks to throw, completes the pass. First down, Washington. And out of bounds. Is Patrick Reddick. It's his third catch this year, the true freshman from Newbury Park, California. We talked about Tuiasa Sopo and his big game against Nebraska, 270 yards, a couple touchdowns. And look at the throw on the run. That's a nice play, moving to your right, and giving your wide receiver a nice soft ball to bring in. Tuiasa Sopo is going to make a lot of noise down the road up in Seattle. They have produced so many great quarterbacks at this school. I mean, you go back and you look at the Hewards, and then there's Kerry Conklin and Sonny Six Killer and Billy Joe Holbert, Mark Brunel and Steve Pelour, Tom Flick, Chris Chandler, Hugh Millen, Warren Moon, Don Heinrich. Those are a lot of names. That is not one of them. Well, that fan doesn't, he's not, this fan doesn't forget Bob Schlerett back in the early 60s. He's a big Bob Schlerett fan, former Washington Husky quarterback. Took the Huskies to two Rose Bowl victories in the early 60s. Don't they have more Husky quarterbacks in the NFL than in the other school? Really a lot of Washington quarterbacks in the late 80s and 90s have made their way into the pros. You know, Billy Joe Hobart recently let go by the Bills, but you got guys like Hugh Millen and Chandler and Conklin and Brunel, and, and Brunel Warren Moon, yeah. a, a guy who's still in the league and playing very well, thank you. And a name that is missing among that list, and to a great disappointment of his father, is David Norrie. Your dad wanted you to become a Husky. No comment. <laughs> Tuiasa Sopo throws too tall and almost picked off. Hilly, he almost had a chance to pack that in at quarterback and return it about 65 yards for a touchdown. That was pretty close, Steve. I almost went to Seattle, but uh, the lure of the bright lights and the big city <laughs> had to head south down to Westwood. What quarterback did Washington settle on? Well, at that time, in that, in that particular year, I believe it was Steve Millen. And uh, Millen had a nice career, was a third round pick in the NFL. Ended up giving way his senior season to Chris Chandler. Chandler took over as a young quarterback up in Seattle. Jarzinka trying to chase it down at the one yard line, but it goes into the end zone. Joe gave it his best effort. Again, you can win two free tickets to the 1998 Rose Bowl game and many more front prizes. Point your web browser to the Pac-10's official website at http www.pac10.org. Org. Electronically enter to win two free Rose Bowl tickets along with many more great prizes. As I always say, just check out the address and dial it up. You talk about a mouthful. 
It's another language for me. Thomas will go back to the air. He's got time. Oh, what a hit. Robert Prescott with the catch. But well, what a hit delivered by Brendan Jones. Tomich is going to roll to his left, half roll. And then the crossing route all the way across the field. Prescott, whoa. That's, that's the helmet. Watch what hits the turf first. Nothing but helmet. You have to hand some credit to Prescott holding on there. That's a nice job of concentrating and bringing the ball in. And the catch is made by Oregon State, and they are close to another first down all the way to the 44-yard line. Adrian Woodson, the third street fullback now in the game, the senior from Temple, Texas, former tight end. And with three minutes and 16 seconds to go, and Washington leading by 35 points. They certainly will hold on to their number seven ranking in the country. And most of the teams seem like everybody was able to hold on to a victory. It was in the top six spots ahead of them. Thomas deep. Ainsworth coming back for the football and completes the pass at the 13-yard line. Head coach Mike Riley knows that one thing that's really lacking is the deep threat in the passing game. Ainsworth got the start today, Prescott on the other side. Riley wants to give his passing game a shot to threaten the field vertically. Ainsworth had a big game last week against UCLA and a nice job of using the footwork along the sidelines to bring that football in for 32 yards. Now to the nine yard line, they go right back to Adrian Woodson. That's what they've been hoping for from Tyler Thomas. You know, we talked to Riley yesterday and brought up the fact that Thomas did hit some balls last week against UCLA. He came into the game, Oregon State playing from behind the better part of that football game. I mentioned they also put the ball up 64 times, but Thomas got some great experience in that football game. And this is going to help him out down the road as well, getting to play against the Huskies in this fourth quarter. On second down, the run the ball, Dandridge. At first, there was a huge hole inside, then it was closed up quickly by Jeff Johnson, an inside linebacker, and also Brendan Jones, the free safety, and Chris Lang, a defensive end. Oregon State going with a big helping of pass plays on this particular drive, and then they dropped a little underneath handoff. A lot of second and third stringers in the game for Washington, but still that trademark aggressiveness and pressure up front. Nice reaction to the run. Third down and four. Thomas blitzes on, he throws, touchdown! The true freshman tight end from Jacksonville, Oregon, with his first collegiate touchdown. Tyler Tomich, third and goal. This is a well-thrown ball. And don't you love to have a big tight end, a big target, Maurer? Maurer had that big play in the first half on the fake field goal to keep Oregon State's first touchdown drive alive. And those are the changes we're seeing Mike Riley made. He knows that in the future he's going to need a big quarterback with a big arm and a tight end who can run. In the past they got tight ends who could only block, but Tomich and Maurer are showing they can do both. One minute, 57 seconds remaining in this game, but Tyler Thomas, really impressive on that last drive. Five for five, 76 yards, and he makes it. Washington 45, Oregon State 17. 
young quarterback getting a baptism by fire over the last couple weeks and even going back three weeks he had a nice day against Utah State 9 to 17 over 100 yards passing in the last two weeks Steve playing against a couple of top ranked Pac-10 foes he's been planted a couple times in the backfield I mean he's been hit hard there is the onside kick. It is recovered by Washington, and they will have the football at the 44 in Oregon State Territory. It is time for our player of the game, and we've got to go back to the wonderful game that Rashawn Sheehy had today, 167 yards rushing. It is brought to you by Carl's Jr. He scored two touchdowns on the day. One early, one in the second half. And, you know, when they just gave him the football second half and they just said, let's see if you can stop our ground game, Washington's fortunes just took off. Sheehy, fourth consecutive game over 100 yards. Got a nice little streak going. He's got to give a lot of credit to that husky offensive line. Tuiasa Sopo handing off to Jason Harris, who. Pushes his way for about seven yards to the 37 yard line. Clock will move down inside 145 as the next play comes up. Jonathan Jackson on the tackle. There's Jason Harris as coach Jim Lambright has used three running backs in this game. Sheehy, Maurice Shaw, and Jason Harris. Harris has one of the three touchdowns on the trio. It's good to hear Jonathan Jackson's name on a call. We talked about the Utah State game. What a play he made for the Beavers late in that football game. A tackle, a strip, and a recovery to turn away Utah State. Big win for Oregon State. Yeah, they have three wins in non-conference play. It's the first time Oregon State won all of their non-conference games since 1957. Yeah, not, not really a rough non-conference schedule when you play North Texas and Utah State, San Jose State. What, what was most impressive to me about their schedule coming into these last two weeks was the way they played Stanford and Arizona State here in Corvallis. Second and three. Harris has the first down, and he has run out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Very good defensive game by that pair of outside linebackers. Maybe the best pair of outside backers in the Pac-10. Well, I think that's without a doubt. Chorak, Defensive Player of the Year. Jensen, honorable mention, all Pac-10 last year. They are great ones. You see Chorak there. Hey, Jerry, we're on. Jerry, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, pal. A couple of old hands for the Huskies. They've been through many a battle. Come on over to my mom's house tonight for some pancakes. You know, and even though the Huskies lost in Nebraska, that was not an embarrassing score, Stephen. It happened early enough in the in the year that if Washington can, Washington can run the rack and then win on New Year's Day, they're going to be in the top two or three teams and maybe number one. Well, Lambright is not going to rub salt in the wound. A game that was tied at 10. Jim will say, we'll take this 45-17 victory and go play USC next week. There's Brock Hewitt who had a fabulous second half. 